Yes, is that really the case? Okay, I see. Hanging up the phone bug, Sengoku rubbed his eyebrows with a headache. In response to the message from Smoker, Mancha D. Luffy refused to become a navy and officially set sail in the name of pirates, which Sengoku had long expected. It's just that how much reward should be set for him, but Sengoku can't make up his mind for a while. Bang bang bang. Just when Sengoku was having a headache, there was a violent knock on the door, accompanied by the annoying shouting of an old guy. Yo, Sengoku, are you busy, do you want to have some donuts to relax? Before Sengoku could respond, the knocker outside kicked the door open. Then he carried a pack of donuts in his hand, and just stuffed it into his mouth as he walked in with a big grin. Looking at Carp, who kicked in the door, sat on the sofa with his butt, and leisurely ate a donut, Sengoku was angry. Good guy, I'm here to have a headache because of your grandson's affairs, you old guy don't come to share it for me, forget it, and still seduce me with donuts here. Thinking of this, Sengoku stood up directly from his seat. Carp, who saw Sengoku gang up, thought that Sengoku was going to sit next to him and eat with him, so he generously moved a place. Unexpectedly, the approaching Sengoku did not sit down, but snatched the donut bag from his hand before Carp could react. Then he craned his neck and poured the donuts from the bag into his mouth as Carp looked terrified. Carp, who finally realized what was happening, jumped up from the couch and snatched Sengoku's pocket. However, it was too late, and there was no donut left in the bag. And Sengoku is, clicking, chewing on the donut that has completely entered his mouth. Ah Carp roared, grabbed Sengoku's neck, and shook desperately. Although he was pinched by Carp's neck and shook desperately, at this time, the land and the warring states changed their previous depression, and they only felt that after snatching Carp's donut, their whole mood had improved. Somewhere in the new world, that, that man is, Hawk, Hawkeye. Why are you here? Don't be nervous, I'm not here to fight, but I have something to ask your boss for. Just when a little brother staggered to report, Hawkeye directly followed in. Huh, rare guest, are you here to duel with me? I'm sorry, I'm a little uncomfortable drinking too much now, so I can only stay in the duel next time. The red-haired man sitting on the stone, with three claw marks running through his left eye, had a face that should have been quite domineering, but it looked quite ridiculous because he was drunk. I'm not interested in going head to head with drunks. I'm only here because I met the boy you mentioned. Ignoring the red haired man's actions, Hawkeye's sharp eyes stared directly at the drunken and figureless man. And when he heard Hawkeye say the boy, the man who was originally drunk seemed to wake up in an instant. Even the cadres around who were still gagging around them gathered their eyes at the same time. Luffy. With a skilled three color domineering, a strong physique, and a deep devil fruit ability, it's really hard to imagine that there would be such an outstanding young man in that remote East China Sea. I can actually hear the words of complimenting others from your mouth, it seems that Luffy is really good. How about it, did you make a move to let him see the power of the world's strongest swordsman? Since you can know that he is proficient in using domineering and fruit abilities, then it must be a shot, haha, that precocious imp must have been taught a very bad lesson. Shanks, who had a look of remembrance in his eyes, did not make a sound and these laughing voices came from those cadres next to him. Lesson, it won't be long before he hits you, no, Hawkeye, even if it's you, you'll be drunk by us if you underestimate us. Hearing Hawkeye's words, the surrounding cadres let out a sound of ridicule. Only Shanks, at this time, did not have the slightest doubt about Hawkeye's words. He didn't say anything, though, just suddenly took out a jug of wine from the side and threw it to Hawkeye, who had been looking at him. We haven't seen each other for a long time, thank you for bringing me news from Luffy, come, I'll toast you. Shanks held Griffin's hilt in his right hand, and his intact left hand picked up the unfinished flask next to him and gestured to Hawkeye. Not far from Rogue Town, the Mary was floating calmly. Because it was night, Luffy didn't let Nami continue to direct the direction, but was ready to rest for the night and set off tomorrow. In the cabin of the Mary, Luffy and the others were eating dinner cooked by Sanji. Usopp, after dinner, let's go and paint the pirate pattern on the mainsail of the Mary. Now that he has officially become a pirate, it is time to draw the previously unfinished straw hat skull pattern. Understood, leave it to me. For Usopp, who had finally become a pirate, he was still in a state of excitement at this time. By the way, Nami, did you buy them clothes? As if thinking of something, Luffy turned his gaze to Nami, who was sitting next to him, and asked. No, I only bought yours. 
What's wrong? Nami replied with a natural expression, but she was a little curious about why Luffy asked that. EMM. The climate of the Great Voyage is ever changing, and if it snows and you don't have winter clothes. Luffy was only halfway through his words when he noticed that Zoro, Sanji, and Usopp were all looking at Luffy. Ah, hearing Luffy's words, Nami understood. I did hear that the climate of the Great Route was changeable, but listening to Luffy's words, it seemed that there was more than change. The climate of the Great Voyage may be a summer with a scorching sun one second, and a snowy winter the next, so you must prepare clothes for each season. Luffy roughly explained, then paused for a moment, and felt that it wasn't really a big deal. Of course, a few of them are rough and thick skinned, and even if they are frozen, they should be fine. Don't be verbose, I'll take out my clothes later. Seeing that Luffy had a tendency to ignore their lives or deaths, the three of them immediately sharpened their teeth and yelled at Luffy. In this way, everyone had a pleasant dinner, and then went back to rest, ready to recuperate and march on the great voyage tomorrow. Of course, Luffy was much stronger than them, and sneaked into Nami's room in the middle of the night while they were asleep. Early in the morning, Luffy walked out of Nami's room, and the others hadn't gotten up yet. As for Nami, she is still asleep. Sitting on the sheep's head on the bow of the Mary, Luffy looked at the morning sun that had just risen from the sea level, slightly intoxicated. On this day when the great voyage is about to begin, it seems that it is a good weather, and there should be no more storms like in the original book. It's a good luck, isn't it? Luffy thought to himself. The overlord is domineering, do you really have to go to the gossip of, quitting the king's addiction? Now that the flow of armed color domineering has been almost mastered, much faster than expected. As for the devil fruit, to be honest, if it is not necessary, Luffy feels that fourth gear is a bit inappropriate. When you run out, all the armed color domineering will be consumed, and you will have to rely on time to recover your domineering before you can continue to use it. In Luffy's opinion, it is not as convenient as the third gear developed by himself now with domineering flow, and it may hurt even more. Moreover, when I learned the domineering winding of the overlord color in the future, and with the third gear that is not too deformed now, it will be more flexible, and it can be regarded as using the ultimate move as a flat A. Before Luffy crossed, the plot progressed during that time in Wano country. The enemies on the surface that were shown at that time, except for Aunt Kaido, were Blackbeard with the ability of the double fruit, and everything is a mystery of I am. As for Shanks, Luffy leans to the fact that he is not his enemy. In the case of the Navy, it depends on the development of the form in the future, but there is a high probability that it will still appear as an enemy, right? Secretly thinking about the future plot, just taking advantage of the current free time, you can plan a little bit of the route after entering the Great Route. The general direction, at least until the Chambord Islands, can follow the plot. Of course, if there are no accidents, and after arriving in the Chambord Islands, it is estimated that he will have to let Sauron and them go to practice for two years. Otherwise, the time is too short, no matter how talented Zoro and the others are, they will not be able to keep up with the battle intensity of the New World. Er Luffy is also wandering around the Great Voyage for a few years, but this is a pure waste of time. Moreover, let Zoro and them each practice for two years, and they may be able to make some preparations, and some people may be able to pull them to their own boats. Er deadlift ace to keep him from Blackbeard? Luffy thought about it, but he still forgot it, even if he didn't have the shock fruit. Blackbeard would be able to gain other fruit abilities, unless he stole the dark fruit before he ate it. Moreover, at this point in time, Blackbeard should have already eaten the dark fruit, right? After thinking about it, Luffy still felt that it was better to make the top war fight. I don't need to waste time in the big prison under the sea when I know the plot, and by the way, I let Blackbeard take advantage of the loophole. And with his current strength, even if Ace is caught, as long as the Navy wants to execute Ace, he has a great chance of rescuing Ace. Even Whitebeard doesn't have to die. The most important thing is the plot two years later. Why don't you take advantage of those two years to go to the country of Wano? Hook up with Yamato or something. Phew. Invite on board. Luffy thinks this may work. Yamato is quite good in terms of strength and character. As for wanting to be Mita, then let her be. Is there anyone other than Yamato who could possibly be invited on board? Luffy bit his finger and thought about it carefully, pheasant? Before he knew his purpose, Luffy wasn't sure that he would be able to protect Nami and them in his hands if he were going to make a move. If its own strong combat power can't be invited, then what about those who have fruit abilities against the sky? Princess Mononoke Perona, Lucky Fruit Ability Bakara, 
and even former Navy regression for Udain. These people should all be invited, right? In addition to inviting people on board, Nami and Usopp's devil fruits also have to be on the agenda. It is best to get it before the two-year practice, so that there will be a two-year buffer period to get used to the fruit ability. What are you thinking, Luffy? At some point, Nami had already appeared behind Luffy. Glancing at the sky, before I knew it, the sun had fully risen. As a result, do you still not have a qualitative decision to think about it yourself? Luffy was a little helpless, but then shook his head again, these things will be considered later. As long as one's own strength can be raised to a very high level, then these so called considerations will completely depend on interest. And, judging from his current strength, maybe he doesn't need to wait too long. Just think about whether you have missed any important information and what will happen after you enter the Great Voyage. Luffy didn't have a specific explanation, and no matter how much he said now, Nami couldn't understand it. That's right. Nami didn't ask much, for Luffy, Nami now trusts him wholeheartedly. All he had to do was set the course for his voyage. Now that we're all up, let's go. While Luffy and Nami were chatting, Zoro and the others yawned one after another and walked out of the cabin where they were sleeping. Seeing that everyone was already up, Luffy stopped thinking about all the miscellaneous things. Retracting his chaotic thoughts, Luffy yelled at the Zoro who had already cheered up. Then, Nami commanded the crowd to adjust the direction of the Mary. It's just the East China Sea, and even after a night, the Mary hasn't deviated much. After correcting that little angle, the Mary officially set off for Upside Down Mountain, the entrance to the Great Voyage. Before the ship is about to enter the canal up the mountain on the current, Luffy decides to have the group have a launching ceremony in the original book to celebrate the ship's entry into the Great Ocean. Asked Sanji, who kept the ingredients for the drink, for a barrel, and Luffy took the lead in stretching out his right foot and stepping on it. I'm going to travel the world and walk all over the ocean. Nami followed Luffy and lifted her slender right leg. I'm going to travel around the world with Luffy and draw a map of the world. Luffy glanced at Nami and then turned his gaze to Zoro. I want to be the number one swordsman in the world. Zoro duly raised his right foot and stepped onto the barrel. I'm going to find Allblue. This is Sanji's voice. I. I want to be a brave warrior at sea. Under everyone's gaze. Usopp finally lifted his right foot and stepped onto the barrel. Great voyage, here we come. Then, to the cheers of the crowd, the Mary rode the current into the canal leading to the top of the upside down mountain. Because of the fine weather, the Mary was able to enter the entrance where only one ship could enter. Then, following the upward current, the Mary sailed to the top of the hill at great speed, and then rode the current downward from the other side, and soon came to an open exit. The Straw Hat Pirates have officially entered the Great Voyage. This should be the twin capes marked on the nautical charts. The Mary, which rushed down from the mountain at a high speed with the current, finally came to a slow stop. Looking at the lighthouse in front of them, Zoro and the others were excited. Even Luffy couldn't help but feel a little excited, and finally entered the Great Voyage. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Just when Luffy and the others were still in the excitement of entering the Great Voyage, a strange roar came. Then, a large black shadow quickly rose from the calm sea. The black shadow stood upright, rising to a height of 20 or 30 meters above the sea. On the top of its head, there are criss-crossing scars. If you look closely, it is a huge whale. Ah, H. Looking at the huge whale that suddenly surfaced in front of the Mary, Usopp panicked and ran back and forth on the deck of the Mary. Even Zoro and Sanji couldn't help but break out in a cold sweat on their foreheads at this time. Nami hid behind Luffy as soon as the whale appeared. His hands gripped the corners of Luffy's clothes tightly and looked at the big whale with a scream. Although Luffy didn't feel scared, such a huge whale still made Luffy feel a burst of surprise. This is the first time Luffy has seen such a large creature, both in his past life and now. This must be Rab, right? Luffy looked at the huge whale in front of him, and he already knew the origin of the whale in his heart. Just when a few people were still shocked and scared, something happened that made everyone even more stunned. I saw that the huge whale that had been standing on the surface of the sea suddenly opened its mouth. The fully open whale's mouth was enough to swallow an unknown number of merlies. Just after the giant whale grows its mouth, a huge suction comes out of the whale's mouth. Under this force, the calm sea where the Mary was originally located suddenly rolled and the turbulent currents formed. Following the whale's open mouth, the Mary, 
driven by the current, was forced to sail towards the whale's mouth. 2. Want, I'm going to be eaten by whales. Luffy, think of a way, we're going to be eaten. Damn, that's too much of an exaggeration. Luffy, who was desperately shaking his body by Nami, had to hug Nami tightly. It's not that I'm afraid that Nami will be thrown out, but Luffy feels that if he doesn't move, he will be stunned by Nami. Although the sea outside was rough, the currents that went straight into the whale's body did not fluctuate much. The Mary sailed quickly and steadily into the darkness. It didn't take long for a light to come, and several people except Luffy who had a feeling of closing their eyes and waiting for death came back to their senses. Where is this? There is actually a sky, and we are not swallowed by whales. Huh, there's a house there, does anyone live here? A few people were talking there word by word, completely forgetting the scene of tears just now. Luffy looked at the small house not far away and thought slightly. I don't know if there is any useful information on Kulokus's side. Or ask him if he has any medical notes or anything that he can prepare for Chopper. Luffy is no longer thinking about whether he will be able to invite the crew smoothly. Just as everyone was still sighing at this wonderful space, another huge creature suddenly jumped out from under the water. Unlike just now, this time the creature pounced directly on the Mary, apparently intending to attack the Mary. What's it this time again? The continuous fright finally made Usopp break down, and he sat down on the deck, holding the mast in tears and shivering. It's the king's squid, Luffy, hurry up and deal with it. Nami, who had been behind Luffy since just now, grabbed Luffy again and shook it. Luffy was helpless, and when he was about to solve it, two sounds of breaking the air came. Whoosh! Two throwing spears pierced the king's squid's back and the tips of the spears pierced through the front of the king's squid facing the Mary. Then, the king's squid, which had been violently pounced towards the Mary, stiffened and fell down all at once. The splash shook the Mary violently. After the king's squid fell into the water, a large net was thrown directly over and the body of the king's squid was trapped. Luffy looked at the source of the spear and the net, which was the only small house in the space. It's a flower, because of the location, Sanji could only see a few petal shaped spread outs over there. It's a man, someone is dragging this king's squid. Nami, who was standing behind Luffy, finally breathed a sigh of relief, and her position could clearly see the situation on the other side. Did the old gentleman kill the king's squid? After finally seeing that it was a person on the other side, Sanji looked at him in disbelief. And the old man who dragged the king's squid to the shore also looked at Sanji. The sharp eyes made Sanji nervous for a while, and cold sweat broke out on his forehead. This feeling made Sanji feel as if he was back to the scene he was shocked by Luffy a few days ago. Just as Sanji was nervously waiting for the other party to speak, the old man with strange petals on his head suddenly ran to the recliner next to him. Then he lay down directly in Sanji's stunned eyes, and took out a newspaper to read by the way. You have something to say. Sanji, who was frightened by the old man's eyes before, saw that the other party was lying down to read the newspaper so abruptly, and the image of the original hidden master collapsed instantly. Sanji, who couldn't bear it anymore, suddenly roared at the other party. And Usopp, who was still trembling with fear by the king's squid, was no longer afraid after seeing the king's squid being killed. If you want to fight, Lao Tzu will accompany you, we have cannons. Hearing Usopp's words, the old man lying on the recliner finally reacted, and once again looked at Sanji and Usopp with sharp eyes. Don't say that, it's going to kill people. Who do you think will die? With the first experience, Sanji was not frightened by the other party's momentum this time. Me. The understatement once again broke Sanji's defenses. It's you, don't be so angry, old man, can you tell us who you are, and what is this place? Sauron on the side couldn't stand it anymore, and asked the old man in a self-righteous tone. Isn't it proper etiquette to give your name before asking anyone? The old man didn't answer directly, but looked at Sauron with the same eyes. Zoro was not frightened, and nodded after hearing the old man's words. Yes, you're right, I'm sorry, my name is. My name is Kulokas, I'm the lighthouse keeper of Cape Gemini, I'm 71 years old, type AB, Gemini. Zolan, who was originally full of confidence, broke the defense in an instant, and if it wasn't for Usopp grabbing it behind him, he would probably have drawn his knife and slashed at the old man. Puff. Looking at the familiar and hilarious scene in front of him, Luffy couldn't help but laugh out loud. And after hearing Luffy's laughter, 
Kulokas, who wanted to continue, finally noticed Luffy. After seeing the familiar straw hat, Kulokas was slightly stunned, but did not show any unusual emotions. And ask me who I am, this is my private villa, you broke in, I want to ask who you are. Kulokas continued what he had just left to speak. We should have been swallowed by a huge whale, but here we, it. Nami couldn't say anything more than halfway through, after all, it didn't look like the inside of a whale's belly at all. This whale's name is Rab, right? Ignoring the puzzled eyes of everyone on the Mary, Luffy looked at Kulokas and asked. Oh, boy, you know it? I've never told anyone the name of this whale. It stands to reason that apart from the Rumba pirates who left this whale here in the first place, only they should know. However, the young man in front of him wearing a familiar straw hat called out the name of Whale Rab in one mouth. Kulokas raised his eyes slightly, could the other party be a descendant of someone in the Rumba Pirates? No a little bit, and I still have news of the Rumba Pirates. There are some things you don't need to hide from what you know. Even if people wonder why he knows so much, Luffy is confident enough that he doesn't need to explain anything to others. For Luffy's straight ball, Kulokas didn't know how to react for a while. It's not a good thing to do, but how about I want to use this message in exchange for Mr. Kulokas's medical notes or something? Luffy didn't beat around the bush, and if his foresight could make him and Zoro stronger, then there was nothing to hesitate about. It seems that you are not a simple teenager, it's a rare thing to know the identity of your doctor. Unless you ask about it, no one on the ships that pass by knows that he's a doctor. And Luffy not only knows, but even has news about the Rumba pirates that he has never heard of. Kulokas had to wonder what Luffy's identity was. As a ship doctor on a former One Piece ship, you should recognize this straw hat, right? Luffy took off the straw hat he had been wearing on his head, held it in his hand, and looked at Kurokas and said, Luffy, what did you just say? One Piece? Of the ship's doctor? Zoro and the others, who didn't understand what Luffy and the old man were talking about, suddenly showed shocked expressions when they heard Luffy say that the old man in front of them was the ship doctor of One Piece. A few people would never have imagined that they would be able to meet the crew of the legendary One Piece as soon as they entered the Great Voyage. Surely this is not a joke? Nami, in particular, had already pulled Luffy's hand into her broad chest at this time, with an expression of wanting to find the bottom of it. Seeing this scene, Sanji's eyes breathed fire, and he gritted his teeth with jealousy and was helpless. What a nostalgic title, I didn't expect that even now, there are still people who know me, an old fellow who lives in seclusion. Kulokas, who was still a little defensive, let down his guard after Luffy took off his straw hat. The person who can make Shanks give away the straw hat must have something special. But Luffy, how do you know this? Seeing that the other party admitted her identity, Nami and the others were surprised at the same time, and more puzzlement welled up in their hearts. Since it is the person favored by the original owner of this straw hat, then I will not hide it. Boom. Boom. Just as Kulokas was about to say something, a violent shaking came. Nami fell to the side without noticing for a moment, and Luffy quickly grabbed her. Zoro and Sanji, who were on the side, also grabbed the railing of the ship for the first time. Only Usopp didn't react immediately, and was directly shaken to the deck by this violent shaking. It can be said that on the first day of entering the Great Voyage, Usopp endured all kinds of tribulations. How? What's wrong? S going on? Although he fell on the deck, Usopp also grabbed the mainmast at once, and asked in a trembling voice as he fixed his figure. Kulokas, who was originally standing on the shore, also grabbed a coconut tree next to him for the first time, stabilized his body, and quickly jumped into the seawater, which was actually whale stomach juice. I'll talk about the details later, I'll go and calm down Rab first. Kurokas, who poked his head out of the water, said to Luffy and the others, and then plunged into the water again and swam somewhere. Luffy grabbed the railing with his right hand and firmly hugged Nami's waist with his left hand, in such a situation, even Luffy had no better way. Now we have to wait for Kulokas to inject Rab with a sedative to calm him down. Finally, not long after Kulokas left, the shaking of the space stopped. When Luffy and the others were on their feet, Kulokas swam over from the sea of stomach acid again. Since you have news of the Rumba pirates, then come with me, just now that Rab has calmed down. He will tell him as well. Luffy pulls Kurokas onto the Mary, and the Mary is guided towards an exit. It's amazing. It actually made the sky look like it was in the belly of a whale. 
After coming out of the whale's belly, Usopp, who finally understood the situation inside, couldn't help but marvel at it. At this time, on the shore of the twin heads, the huge whale that had swallowed the Mary before was standing quietly upright, its body facing the direction of the upside down mountain, and its eyes seemed to be looking somewhere. Hey, Rab! Luffy, who jumped off the Mary, walked directly to the shore in front of Rab. It seemed that he heard Luffy's voice shouting at himself, and in those huge eyes, the eyeballs rolled slightly, glancing in Luffy's direction. Brooke is still alive. He ate the yellow spring fruit, and although he died once, he was resurrected by the power of the yellow spring fruit. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hearing Luffy's words, Rab's eyes seemed to see the figure of the exploding head and playing the violin. Kurokas, who had disembarked from the Mary, paused slightly when he heard Luffy say Brooke's name, and then found another stone to sit down. It's a little weird now, but I'm sure you'll recognize him. Looking at Rab, who had been calling since he heard Brooke's name, Luffy smiled slightly. You can't continue to ram the Red Earth Continent until we meet next time, in exchange, I'll bring Brooke to you the next time we meet, how about it? On the shores of the Twin Headlands, Kulokas quietly watched the Meli and the straw-hated figure on the Mary. Will he be the one you are waiting for, Roger? Sighing softly, Kulokas looked at Rab again, who was also looking at the distant figure, and smiled slightly. Good news for me, I can finally relax, my old bones. Intelligence Service of the Naval Headquarters Regarding the new group of pirates mentioned a few days ago, the Straw Hat Pirates, the final determination of its leader, the Straw Hat Kid Mancha D. Luffy, has a bounty of 90 million bailey. A bounty was laid out on a display board. The portrait is only the upper body, the person in the portrait is wearing a red shoulder jacket, an ordinary straw hat on his head, one hand on the top of the straw hat, the shadow cast by the pressed brim of the hat slightly covers the eyes, and the corners of the mouth on the delicate and resolute face are raised. At the bottom of the portrait, a line of money is printed on it, and it is the 90 million bailey that the intelligence department personnel just said. The first bounty was as high as 90 million bailey, is it too high to think of the other party? To be able to play against Hawkeye without losing, I think 90 million bailey is too little. But after all, it's just the first time to offer a reward, and if the amount is too high, it may have a bad response. But no matter what, since there is 90 million bailey for the first time, there must be extraordinary ability, if it is not dealt with in time, there may be a powerful force on the sea. Windmill Village Banquet Bar. Hey. Hey, come and see, Luffy's kid has been rewarded. The door of the bar was pushed open, and a villager rushed in excitedly with a bounty slip in his hand. Oh, really, how much was the bounty? The guests who were drinking in the bar looked excited after hearing the words of the person holding the bounty list. It's as if the bounty on that bounty sheet is not for someone else, but for themselves. 90 million bailey, the first reward is 90 million bailey. The person with the bounty list didn't sell it, and announced it loudly. Wow, Luffy's kid is too good. You can't be mistaken, right? Hey, it's 90 million bailey. Doesn't that mean that there is really a sea thief in our village? Yes, that's great. What's good, there are such pirates in the village, what do you have to be happy about? The door to the bar was pushed open again, and this time it was the elderly village chief himself. Ah, it's the village chief. The village chief is here, too. Ha ha ha, Magino, give me another drink. Hearing the guest's words, Magino added another glass of wine to the guest, and then poured another drink from the counter for the village chief who had just taken his seat. The face that usually has a gentle smile is looking at the bounty that has been posted up at this time. Orangetown, Mayor Mayor, Mayor Mayor, there's news from that boy in the straw hat. On the restored prosperity of the town, a certain villager also held a bounty in his hand and hurried towards the mayor's house. The mayor of the town, who heard the voice, hurriedly ran out and took the bounty sheet in the hands of the villagers and looked at it. Mancha D. Luffy, were you the one who drove out the Bucky Pirates at the time? But how could you be rewarded when you weren't an evil doer? Finally knowing the name of the figure he hadn't seen at the time, the mayor was full of doubts about the bounty list. Sarab Village, Miss, there's news from Mr. Luffy. Melly, the butler who walked in from outside the room, held a bounty slip in his hand and showed it in front of Kia. Kia, who was wearing glasses, put down the medical knowledge book she was learning in her hand and took the bounty sheet from the butler with a little excitement. Mr. Luffy. The fist that smashed into Chloe at that time not only saved Croya's life from Chloe's hands, but also caused ripples in Croya's originally calm and waveless heart. 
The eldest lady, who has always been like a canary and can only live in a cage-like mansion, really yearns for the outside world for the first time. Restaurant at sea, boss, the boy in the straw hat has been rewarded. Ah Jin, who came back from buying ingredients from outside, still had a newly bought bounty list in his hand. Jeppu, who came out of the kitchen, took the bounty list from Ah Jin's hand. I was actually offered a bounty of 90 million, it should have been caused by that duel with Hawkeye, right? But this also proves that the kid is really powerful, and Sanji may really be able to fulfill his dream by following him. Thinking of this, the corners of Zapu's eyes moistened a little, and that hateful stinky imp finally had his own way to go. Somewhere in the new world, hey, boss, Luffy's bounty list has come down. Biting on the chicken leg, Rikiru glanced at the newspaper in the hand of one of the younger brothers, and snatched one of the bounty slips. I was actually rewarded with 90 million for the first time, maybe what Hawkeye said before was true, he may be able to catch up with us soon. What, you're scared? Shanks was not surprised that Luffy could be rewarded with 90 million. On the contrary, I felt that this should be the first time that the world government was afraid that Luffy had been rewarded, so it was too high, so there was only 90 million Bailey. Hey, boss, that's not how to joke, ha ha ha, when that day comes, you can't let Luffy underestimate it. I've wanted to beat up that precocious imp for a long time, ha ha ha. At this time, Luffy and the others, who had not yet received the news, were doing another thing. I said that the two of you secretly climbed into our boat without our consent, do you have to give a reasonable explanation? On the deck of the Mary, Luffy, Nami, Zoro, Usopp, and Sanji were forming a circle at this time. In the circle, a man and a woman were kneeling on the deck with frightened faces. Please don't hurt us, we just want to hop on your boat to the next island, woo woo. Are you taking us for fools? For the two people who appeared on the ship, Luffy naturally knew the origin of the two. But I have to say, sometimes playing tricks on people does make people feel good. How? We really got shipwrecked and the ship was ruined, so we had to sneak on your ship to the next island. No more nonsense, show us the way, where you want to take us. Now that he has appeared, Luffy has saved the process of asking Kulokas. Otherwise, if you choose another route, the advantage of knowing the plot well will be useless. Uh huh. It's so cold. On the way to Whiskey Mountain, the changeable climate of the Great Voyage was shown to Luffy and the others for the first time. Just after leaving the Twin Heads, the sun was still shining and the sky was cloudless. However, the Mary had not gone far before the sky began to fall with snow. The snow was falling heavier and heavier, and soon the Mary was covered with a thick layer of snow. At Nami's orders, including the two who had snuck aboard the boat, began shoveling snow. Fortunately, Nami bought Luffy a lot of clothes before, and naturally there are clothes for all seasons in it. Even if you still wear short sleeves, you won't get caught cold or anything with your physique. But if you don't wear warm clothes, you have to wear short sleeves to get cold, and Luffy is not stupid. In his spare time shoveling snow, Luffy glanced at Nami, who was commanding on the bow of the ship and looking down at the recording pointer from time to time. It can only be said that good looking people look good no matter what they wear. The pale yellow long padded jacket is still slim, with a scarf around the neck, and the bright orange long hair is still soft and scattered on the back. As for Miss Wednesday, the princess of Alabaston, I can only say that the current outfit is really indescribable. However, for the sake of her serious snow shoveling, Nami still generously gave her a dress. The other man, Mr. Nine, who was his accomplice, was not so lucky. Still dressed in his strange outfit, with frozen snot hanging from under his nose, he was shivering and shoveling the snow on the Mary. Fortunately, his dress is long sleeved, otherwise, it will be even more difficult. It was basically smooth sailing along the way before, and the Mary was not broken here and there like in the original book. So even in such a blizzard, as long as you pay attention to the snow clearing, there will be basically no major problems. The climate of the Great Voyage is ever changing, and as long as it is not a fixed winter island or a summer island, such weather will soon pass. However, even though the blizzard soon stopped, the few people who shoveled the snow were still tired and lying on the deck. The physical strength is still not good, seeing that even Zoro and Sanji fell to the ground to rest, Luffy muttered to himself. You must know that the duel between the strong can often be used for days and nights, and you will be tired from shoveling such a little snow, so you can only say that the cultivation is still not enough. Seeing that the weather had changed to sunny again, 
Luffy took off his padded jacket and hung it on the railing so casually. Hop back into your own special seat, sit on the lovely head of the Mary, and quietly watch the sea clear after the snow. Nami glanced at the sky, then at the recording pointer, and when she saw that there was nothing wrong, she finally breathed a sigh of relief. Although I have learned about the changeable roots of the great voyage from books, it is the first time I have faced such a situation. Even if Nami is confident in herself, she still can't avoid being nervous. But fortunately, nothing went wrong, and with the first experience, I won't be in such a hurry in the future. Picking up Luffy's padded jacket hanging on the railing, Nami gave Luffy a slight glance and walked towards her room. I live in my own room, and my clothes are naturally in my room. Baroque workshops, Clockdoll, and Nicole Robin, and Neferutari Vivi, what secrets do you have? Luffy, who was sitting on the head of a sheep, habitually thought about the next plot. Thinking of Vivi, Luffy couldn't help but glance at the woman who was resting on her back without an image at this time. Can be targeted by Emu, there should be some secrets. What's wrong? What's wrong with that woman? Nami, who changed back to her previous long sleeved jeans outfit, came to Luffy's side again. When I came over, I saw Luffy looking at the woman thoughtfully, and for some reason, Nami always had a very unhappy feeling. And Miss Wednesday, who was lying down to rest, that is, Princess Vivi of Alabaston, suddenly had a feeling of a chill on her back. Neferutari Vivi. Luffy didn't answer Nami right away, but looked back at the unaware woman and spat out a name out of his mouth. Luffy didn't deliberately lower his voice, there are some things, in the face of absolute strength, there is no need to hide it. Hearing Luffy's name, Vivi, who was lying there without an image at all, suddenly stiffened. He continued to lie down motionless, as if he wanted to pretend that he didn't know anything. And Nami, who had been paying attention to that woman because of Luffy's gaze, noticed something strange at the first time. Neferutali? If Nami remembers correctly, it should be the surname of the famous Desert Kingdom, the royal family of Alabaston. Do you want to continue pretending, contrary to your self-proclaimed prince, as a real princess, there must be a reason why you are here, right? What? Where's the princess? When Luffy said the word princess, the first person to react was not Nami next to Luffy, nor Vivi as the person concerned. Instead, it's like Sanji and Mr. Nine who have turned on a switch somewhere. It was supposed to be a serious questioning scene, but after these two guys jumped out, Luffy was in no mood to continue pretending. Miss Wednesday, is what he said true? Are you really a princess? Mr. Nine, who has always called himself a prince, was inexplicably excited when he heard that his partner might be a real princess. Oh, beautiful princess, I have discovered you from the first time we met, do I have the honor to invite you to lunch? However, more excited than Mr. Nine seems to be a cook on his ship. Luffy has an urge to cover his face, this TM hostile relationship has not been resolved, you have joined the enemy? Bang! Nami didn't hesitate to smash her punch. Oh, is Miss Nami jealous of me, and Miss Nami is so beautiful. Wei Wei, who was still nervous because her identity was revealed, actually felt relieved at this time. Just as she was about to speak, the swordsman with three knives next to her spoke first. Huh, you cook, can't tell the difference between an enemy and a friend, and as long as you're a woman, you're going to go up and offer your courtesy? Zoro hasn't forgotten the last time he was ridiculed as a road idiot, and now that he has been caught by himself, there is still a reason to let it go? What are you talking about, green algae, trying to fight? Sure enough, for Sanji, it was Zoro who was more attractive. Looking at the two of them scuffling together, Luffy thought with malice. Quack, just as the scene was a little chaotic, a newsbird flew over the Mary. Nami waved her hand at the newsbird, ignoring Zoro and Sanji, who were still scuffling, and began to bargain with the newsbird in a serious manner. As for it, now that he and others are not short of money, it is impossible to drag the newsbird in order to pay back those baileys. Didn't you see that the newsbirds were so anxious that they were sweating profusely? In the end, Nami still couldn't save a bailey from the newsbird. I won't buy it next time the price increases. Looking at the newsbird that had already flown away, Nami shouted to the sky with a little reluctance. The newsbird heard Nami's shout, its wings fluttered visibly, and then flew away at a faster speed. I said is it necessary, and we're not short of money, are we? Don't you know how much you can eat? I'm not trying to keep you fed, I want to save some money from other places. Hearing Luffy's muttering, Nami exploded all of a sudden, pointed at Luffy and yelled. 
Who is the old lady doing this for? You're good, you still think I'm a money fan, right? The more she thought about it, the more angry she became, and Nami raised her hand holding the newspaper and wanted to throw it at Luffy's head. At that moment, a single piece of paper floated out of the folded newspaper. The paper swayed and floated in front of Weiwei, who was still in a daze. The fluttering paper suddenly attracted everyone's attention. Nami took back the newspaper that hadn't been typed yet, and even Zoro and Sanji, who were still scuffling together, stopped. Seeing that everyone was looking at the paper in front of them, Wei Wei had no choice but to pick up the paper that fell in front of her under the gaze of everyone. Luffy, who was about to bear Nami's moment, also looked over. If you're not mistaken, that piece of paper should be a bounty list, right? Ah with a scream from Wei Wei, who picked up the bounty sheet and unfolded it, everyone also saw the specific content of the bounty sheet at the same time. Road Road Road. Luffy, as always, Usopp exclaimed as soon as he saw the bounty list. Oh, has Luffy been rewarded, and the navy is really fast. Zoro kept the action of choking Sanji's neck, looked at Luffy's avatar on the bounty list and said. But no, the front foot has just rejected the other party's invitation, and the back foot reward has already been hung out. Maybe it won't be long before we'll all be bounty too. Sanji looked at Luffy's bounty with a little envy, but his hand was not taken back from Zoro's body. 9. 90 million Bailey. After seeing the amount of the bounty, Wei Wei exclaimed again. For her, the highest reward amount she saw was only 81 million Bailey. And that is exactly the person he wants to deal with, that is, the Sand Crocodile Clockdoll, one of the seven martial seas of His Majesty. Even if the other party's bounty does not increase because he became the king of the seven martial seas, this also proves that the man in front of him has the strength to become the seven martial seas. Thinking of this, Vivi quickly thought about whether she could ask the other party to help solve Clockdoll. Hey, Miss Wednesday, this guy has a bounty of 90 million Bailey, is it really okay for us to take him to Whiskey Peak? As soon as he saw Luffy's bounty amount, Mr. Nine crawled up to Vivi and whispered in her ear. Good photo. As for his own bounty, Luffy just thinks that this photo is much better than the smiling face in the original book. As for the bounty amount, the higher the better, but there will be more and more troubles that will follow. We have to find the devil fruit for Nami and them as soon as possible, but there is really no way, so we can only try our luck at Anilu and the Golden Lion first. A cold light flashed in Luffy's eyes. Maybe you can try it when you encounter someone with devil fruit ability in the future, after all, no matter how small the chance, there is still a slight possibility of being reborn nearby. Combined with his unusual sight and knowledge, it is not difficult to find if the devil fruit is reborn nearby. Maybe you can always have some fruit on the boat in the future. Anyway, we haven't done anything yet, so why was Luffy offered a bounty by the Navy? Nami didn't understand, after all, her adoptive mother was the Navy. However, she met people like Colonel Mouse and Colonel Monka, which made Nami distrust the Navy for a while. If Luffy hadn't brought Cap, a naval hero, to save her, Nami felt that she might never trust the Navy again. Even if Bermel was once a Navy, however, this bounty once again made Nami full of disappointment in the Navy. It's not all about the Navy. Luffy shook his head, Nami doesn't know the relationship between the world government and the Navy, can she not know? With Carp's relationship, the Navy should not take the initiative to reward itself. After all, he promised Carp, and he also promised Nami that she wouldn't become a pirate like a dragon. If there is no reason for the world government, Luffy doesn't believe it, maybe he has entered the eyes of those five at this time. After all, Luffy has never concealed his name, and the D family has always been the focus of the world government. Although Luffy still hasn't revealed what D is before he crosses, the world government's attention to D is obvious to all. Not a problem with the navy, Nami didn't understand what Luffy meant. Luffy didn't explain either, after all, it was too complicated to explain, and Luffy himself wasn't very clear about the specifics. I don't know the specifics, in short. The navy is not completely autonomous, and there are some things that the world government has the power to decide. Nami nodded as if she didn't understand, and didn't ask any more. That. Mr. Luffy. Ignoring Mr. Nine's constant gestures next to her, Vivi was silent for a moment and decided to take a gamble on Luffy. Hearing Vivi's voice, everyone looked at her. Ignoring the others, Vivi looked at the man sitting at the bow of the boat, and saw that he was looking at herself, before speaking again. As Mr. Luffy said, my real name is indeed Neferutari Vivi. 
Although I don't know how Luffy knows, since I decided to ask the other party to help, it's better not to ask about some things. It is indeed the princess of Alabaston, but now Alabaston is in an unprecedented crisis. I am here and acting in such a capacity for that reason. My country is in the midst of a war, and I've found out who is behind all this, but I can't fight it on my own, so I'd like to ask Mr. Luffy to help. It's not difficult to deal with the sand crocodile clock doll. Hearing Luffy say this, Vivi's excitement appeared in her eyes for a moment, but she quickly suppressed it again. Luffy's words are obviously not finished yet, and Vivi doesn't think that the other party will help her for no reason. But what can you pay? Didn't refuse Vivi's request, but Luffy didn't plan to help in vain. Moreover, even if you agree directly, the other party may not trust you. After all, helping others without asking for anything in return is really not so easy to believe in this pirate infested world. What if one clock doll is killed and another one is stronger? Upon hearing that Luffy didn't mean to refuse, but offered a reward, Vivi was visibly relieved. Everyone is not stupid, and this approach is beneficial to both parties. As the princess of Alabaston, I can call the shots of Bailey, who pays you twice as much as Clockdoll's bounty. The bounty for Clockdoll when he became the seven Marshall Seas was 81 million Bailey, which is 162 million if it is doubled. 162 million, but can you really take that much Bailey? Now Luffy and Wei Wei are not familiar with each other, and the content of the transaction that should be discussed still has to be discussed. Nami on the side was a little surprised that Luffy wanted to accept Vivi's request. But when I heard Luffy say 162 million, I instantly put that dissatisfaction behind me. Although it is true that Alabaston is not rich now, Bailey still has this point. Vivi replied in the affirmative. If with the national strength of Alabaston, even Bailey, which is less than 200 million, can't be taken out, then Wei Wei doesn't have to run around for this country. Just let Clockdoll take the country away. Okay, we promised. Before Luffy could say anything, Nami had already made a decision for Luffy. However, seeing that I turned into Bailey's appearance, I didn't think about what kind of strength Clockdoll was. However, after witnessing Luffy's battle with Hawkeye, Nami felt that the so called sand crocodile could not be Luffy's opponent. That's why Nami didn't hesitate to agree to Vivi. Otherwise, with Nami's concern for Luffy, if the sand crocodile is really strong enough to be Hawkeye, then Nami will not agree to it anyway. But Luffy didn't care much, and Nami agreed. Even if it weren't for Vivi's request, he and the others would have run into Clockdoll. At that time, Luffy naturally wouldn't let Clockdoll go easily. After all, the Russell fruit is quite a good ability. But yes, but before going to Alabaston, the Mary will go to two places first. This. Although she wanted to set off and return to Alabaston immediately, after all, the initiative was in the hands of the other party so Wei Wei could only nod helplessly. In any case, as long as the other party agrees, then there is hope that he will get rid of Clockdoll. Regardless of whether the other party really has the strength to take out Clockdoll, there is nothing wrong with the bounty issued by the navy. At least the other party should have the strength to touch Clockadoll. Miss Wednesday, are you really going to betray the Baroque workshop? Mr. Nine, who had been silent since just now, looked at Wei Wei and asked seriously. Yes. I joined the Baroque studio from the beginning to investigate Clockdoll, and now that the evidence is in hand, and with Mr. Luffy's help, I have no reason to continue working for him. Now that she has received Luffy's affirmative answer, Vivi did not hesitate and answered Mr. Nine's words directly. And what about you, after knowing my identity, are you going to go back and report to the Baroque workshop? If the other party really wants to do this, then Vivi will not hesitate to ask Luffy to kill him. Although they have been partnered together for a long time, compared to Alabaston, the status of the other party is not high, but to that extent. Since you are leaving the Baroque workshop as a real princess, I will naturally follow you to the end as a prince. Mr. Nine can be said to be quite persistent about the prince and princess, even if he risks being killed, he has to follow Wei Wei. It can only be said that if he looks a little longer and is stronger, it will be even better. Wei Wei didn't say anything about his choice, and there are some things that still need to be experienced to understand. Well, you can't really be a prince somewhere, right? Usopp heard Mr. Nine say that he was a prince again, and thought that the other party was really a prince of some kingdom. It's just him, it can't be, he must have said that he wanted to use his status as a prince to get close to Princess Vivi, despicable fellow. For Sanji, whose IQ is basically equal to zero, when he saw Mr. Nine looking at Wei Wei like this, 
he felt that he was being courteous, and immediately mocked. Hey, you guy, don't underestimate me, Mr. Nine, who was taunted by Sanji, immediately yelled at Sanji. In that case, after reaching the Whiskey Peak, let the bounty hunters there settle down, save some time and we can get off early. Now that we have agreed, some things can be said on the bright side. Hearing Luffy's warning, Vivi and Mr. Nine looked at him in shock at the same time. The other party seems to know a lot of things, some things that only he knows, but he can directly expose them, does he have any ability to eavesdrop on other people's thoughts? Wei Wei was a little glad that she chose to confess to the other party after her identity was exposed. Otherwise, even if you reach Whiskey Mountain, you may be killed by the other party, and even all the bounty hunters of Whiskey Mountain will be killed. Vivi, who had seen the strength of Clockdoll, didn't think that those three sect and nine raid disciples would be able to stop Luffy. I just said that I thought your codename was a little familiar before, and now that Luffy mentions Bounty Hunter, I remember that it seems that the Baroque Workshop also contacted me. After hearing Luffy talk about Bounty Hunters, Zoro on the side also instantly remembered some things about the Baroque Work Society. But it doesn't make much sense, everyone Wei Wei has explained everything, and it's not bad for Zoro's news. You're really useless, talk nonsense. Sanji seized the opportunity to be hard, and then the two pinched together again. Looking at Zoro and Sanji, who were making trouble, Luffy didn't pay any attention to it. After the whiskey peaks are the little gardens, and then there's the drum kingdom, don't let me down, chopper. I've got the medical notes for Kulokas. Even if you have the professor of Dr. Dorier, I guess this note will be helpful to you, right? Miss Nami, Miss Vivi, dessert is ready, please enjoy it slowly. On the deck of the Mary, Sanji served two desserts. However, there are still only two women. Hey, cook, don't you have my share of dessert? Mr. Nine, who was not a prisoner, saw that Sanji had only served sweets to the two women, so he shouted at Sanji. As if he were really a prince, waiting for the attendant to bring him dessert. This is a healthy dessert that I made for the two young ladies, and of course it doesn't have the share of a stinky man like you. But he's already eating. Mr. Nine didn't express any dissatisfaction with Sanji's sexism, but just pointed to Luffy who was being fed by Nami. Damn, Luffy, you bastard, that's what I specially prepared for Miss Nami. Looking in the direction Mr. Nine pointed, Sanji saw Luffy biting into the spoon that Nami had handed over. Sanji, who was in the mood to mock Mr. Nine, was jealous for a while, and he only felt that his heart was full of jealousy. Cut. What are you yelling at this curled eyebrow cook? Hearing Sanji's shout, Zoro decisively cast his gaze and mocked mercilessly. So Luffy didn't speak, and Sanji was attracted to Zoro. Looking at Luffy, who was fighting with Zoro and Sanji again, he sighed again that these two were really natural enemies. Mr. Luffy and Miss Nami have such a good relationship. Vivi, who was standing at the bow of the boat, saw Nami feeding Luffy dessert. Luffy didn't look the slightest twist, and said with some envy. Luffy and Nami didn't speak, just quietly savored the dessert made by Sanji. At this time, Di Wei Wei had already loosened the single ponytail that she was originally tied in, and the bangs on her forehead were also put down again. The clothes on his body were also changed into long-sleeved hot pants provided to him by Nami. Compared with the fancy dress I first saw, it gives people a new feeling. And after the sky blue hair was scattered, it was more amazing than before. The dessert made by Sanji Kun is so delicious. Without waiting for the two to respond, Wei Wei could only taste the dessert that Sanji handed over earlier. Just one bite made Vivi like the taste a little. Yes, if nothing else. Sanji's cooking skills are still very good, at least I haven't eaten any better dishes than him. Whether it's Luffy or Nami, they can't find any fault with Sanji's cooking skills. Still sitting on the head of a sheep, Luffy ate the dessert that Nami fed him and looked at the calm sea in the distance. It didn't take long for the shape of a cactus to appear in Luffy's field of vision, and the whiskey peak arrived. Since Vivi had already informed Ikalem, who was going undercover with her, there would naturally be no such thing as a so-called town that welcomed pirates. The Mary sailed smoothly into the harbor, and although there were no townsfolk pretended by the bounty hunters to welcome them, there were still a man and a duck waiting in the harbor. Looking at the curly hair and the fat figure, Vivi jumped off the Mary first. Quickly walked to Ikalim's side, Vivi touched the large duck next to her again, and then introduced Luffy and the others who got off the ship to Uncle Fafu. Lord Luffy, Thank you very much for accepting Princess Vivi's request. 
I recognized the figure wearing the straw hat at a glance, after all, in the past two days, the bounty list with this face has spread all over the world. I don't need to thank you, I didn't help for free, Miss Vivi promised the reward, I hope I don't miss the appointment afterwards. Naturally, please rest assured. There was no bargaining, and there was no distraction, Luffy was able to agree to deal with Clockdoll, one of the seven martial seas of his majesty, at a price of 162 million, and it was already his own side that took advantage. If you don't know what to say, you don't know what to do. Huh, how can you wait, you are finally here, 90 million bounty rookie pirates, I don't know if they really have this strength. Just as Ecolem was about to bring Luffy and the others to town, a discordant male voice came from behind the stone next to him. And you, Mr. Eight, Mr. Nine, and Miss Wednesday, since you have made the decision to betray the Baroque workshop, you must be ready to be purged by Mr. Zero, right? Another female voice rang out from the same direction. Who are you? Mr. Five and Miss Valentine. Looking at a man and a woman coming out from behind the rocks, Vivi and Ecolem recognized them at a glance. Zoro, Sanji, let's solve it, if you don't fight, your skills will regress. Compared to Vivi and the others, Luffy and the others didn't feel anything about the new two at all. You. Who are you? Who is it? Uh, except for Usopp. Naturally, Zoro and Sanji had no objection to Luffy's proposal, but walked towards the man and woman one by one. Hey, Chef Say, don't you think the other party is a woman and can't do it, or you can go back, and it's no problem for both of you to hand it over to me. Yes, before the fight starts, it is estimated that the fight will start on my side. Sure enough, after listening to Zoro's words, Sanji immediately couldn't stand it. Be gentle with ladies, you green algae head you won't understand. Huh, don't put your self-righteous thoughts on anyone else, bastard roll your eyebrows. So, before they could make a move with the enemy, the two of them started to do it themselves. Are you two guys underestimating me? Look at my booger bombs. A noodle-haired man in a coffee-colored jacket and sunglasses feels insulted when he sees Zoro and Sanji completely ignoring him. Immediately stretched out his hand, dug a lump of boogers in the disgusted eyes of everyone present, and then took it in his hand and flicked it towards Zoro and Sanji in the fight. And the two people in the fight, when the boogers were about to talk about the two, suddenly separated. Then, Sauron drew his knife and slashed, directly looking at the boogers in half, and flew towards both sides. Boom! Boom! With two roars, the boogers that flew to both sides exploded, and the flames splashed and kicked up clouds of dust. Zoro, who was still broken by the knife cutting his nose, finally showed a little serious expression when he saw that the nose he split would actually explode. At the same time, Sanji, who flashed to the side, also took out a cigarette from his pocket, lit one, and stuffed it into his mouth and smoked. Devil fruit ability? I didn't expect that as soon as I entered the Great Voyage, I met a devil fruit capable person that is rare to see in the East China Sea. I had a bit of a skill and managed to dodge my booger bomb, but it wasn't that easy to dodge. The man in sunglasses said to the two of them, and then looked at the woman next to him who was holding an umbrella and wearing a strange construction hat. I'll give this one with the knife, and you can deal with the one with the eyebrows, no problem, miss. Valentine's Day? Okay, but you don't want to be hacked to death. The woman who was called, Miss Valentine, replied with a malicious smile. You still have to worry about yourself, after all, you are an accomplice of the pirates who offered a bounty of 90 million bailey, don't be killed by the other party. The man in sunglasses sneered, and then saw him remove a revolver-like pistol from his waist. In this world of pirates with flintlock pistols, it's really surprising to suddenly pull out a revolver. Want to use a gun against me? Zoro had already taken out three knives, and the one in his mouth was still the same as the Dao. The other two in my hand are the new knives I got in Rogue Town. Don't be blown up and killed, Mr. Five replied, and then saw him puff out his breath and blow at the revolver's wheel. The wheel spun around, and Mr. Five was seen shooting directly at Soren's position. Boom, invisible air exploded from where Zoro had stood. Although there was no physical bullet trajectory, Sauron jumped away with his combat instinct. However, although he jumped away, the aftermath of the explosion still blew Zoro into a mess. Although it didn't hurt much, it made Zoro unhappy for a while, especially. That, hey, green algae, why did you get blown up like this in the first place, why don't you go back to Luffy, and I'll give them to both of you. Sanji, who hadn't started a fight yet, saw this scene, 
and naturally wouldn't let go of the opportunity to taunt Zoro. Do you still have the heart to care about others, let me die? Just as Sanji looked over to Zoro's side, Miss Valentine's day suddenly sounded from the air. Then, just as Sanji turned around, his slightly petite body suddenly fell, and his right foot was aimed at the top of Sanji's head and kicked at great speed. Looking at the opponent's obviously abnormal falling speed, Sanji did not choose to hard connect, but quickly jumped to the side. Boom! There was another explosion, this time not the sound of a bomb exploding, but the dull sound of a heavy object falling from a high altitude and slamming into the ground. I watched as a huge crater was smashed out of the place where I was standing, and even the ground near it cracked slightly. Sanji was somewhat glad that he had chosen to dodge. Are you also a devil fruit ability? Sanji, who had regained his footing, looked at Miss. Valentine's Day, his eyes a little solemn. After all, it's the first time you've faced a devil fruit ability, so it's always right to be careful. It seems that I saw that Smoker was easily solved by Luffy before, and let my judgment of the devil fruit go wrong, is Luffy really too strong? But that's right, after all, Luffy is also a devil fruit ability. That's right, I eat light fluttering fruits, which can be changed between 1 10,000 kg at will. Without caring about explaining his fruit ability to Sanji, Miss Valentine's day flew into the sky again. Looking at Miss Valentine, who fell from the sky to him again, Sanji smiled slightly. Maybe the power of your fall from the sky is indeed strong, but… Boom! It's too slow. Sanji, who dodged the crash again, quickly appeared on her side when Miss Valentine's day didn't get up yet. Miss Valentine's eyes widened, and her right foot kicked out. Huh, is it over there? but this lustful cook really can't get rid of his lustful problem. Zoro, who was dodging the shot of Mr. Five's airbomb left and right, caught a glimpse of Sanji who stopped his foot next to the neck of the stunned Miss Valentine, and gently mocked. Then, Sauron stopped his movements, and his body jerked to a halt. Are you finally going to give up? Seeing that Zoro stopped, Mr. Five also stopped shooting, and in his opinion, Zoro was already meat on the chopping board, and Sen slaughtered it himself. Give up, don't just try your new tricks. As he spoke, Zoro put the three generations of Onitru and Yukigo back into the scabbard, and at the same time removed the words that were in his mouth. Holding the text of Wado with his left hand slightly bent and raised, his right hand holding the back arm of his left hand, Sauron squatted slightly. This trick has just been comprehended by me, so let you try it first. Seeing Zoro swinging his sword, Mr. Five, who was far away, didn't care just raised his revolver and aimed at Zoro. Luffy, who was fighting in a straight battle, smiled slightly when he saw Zoro's posture. It seems that it is still effective to mention the iron chopping to Sauron in advance. Bang! One knife stream, 36 troubled winds. As Mr. Five fired, Zoro swung out the Wadochi text in his hand at the same time. A blue swirling chop wave was swung out from the tip of the Kazudo writing knife. The chopping wave slices through the air, scattering the air bomb that was fired at Sauron, and then flying towards Mr. Five, who is still in a shooting position. The flying slash unexpectedly hit Mr. Five, who was standing in place. In Mr. Five's stunned eyes, he directly knocked him out. Hey, green algae, you're too slow, why are you solving it now? Putting down the right leg that was lifted, Miss Valentine, who was already frightened, had no intention of resisting at all. Sanji took a puff of his unfinished cigarette and said to Zoro. Cut, sooner or later, you cook will die at the hands of a woman. For Sanji's stinky problem of not beating women, Zoro just can't get used to it. The enemy is the enemy, what kind of men and women are there, are they really not dead or what? Good. It's so powerful, it turns out that in addition to Mr. Luffy, Mr. Swordsman and Mr. Chef are also so powerful. Looking at Mr. Five, who had been solved, and Miss. Valentine, who was stunned in place, Vivi covered her mouth and exclaimed. And Ecolem on the side was also shocked and speechless. The agents of the Baroque workshop are ranked by numbers, and the smaller the number, the stronger the strength. However, Mr. Five and her partner, who were three levels higher than herself, were easily dealt with by these two. Ikalem has more confidence that Luffy and the others will be able to solve Clockdoll. Now that it's settled, what about that woman? Zoro who returned to Luffy's side looked at Miss. Valentine's Day, who was stunned by Sanji, didn't expect that the mental quality of being a killer was so low. Cook Say is in trouble, and if you knock her down, nothing will happen. 
Tie her up first, or you might be in trouble if you run away. Luffy didn't comment on Sanji's approach, but just said to Usopp on the side. After all, Usopp has everything over there, and there must be no shortage of ropes. Ah. Ooh. Usopp, who was called by Luffy, answered and immediately ran to Miss. Valentine, who was sitting on the ground, and tied her up without any resistance. It takes a day to record the pointer magnetically, so let's fix it here today. Although it was also a subordinate bounty hunter agency of the Baroque Working Society. But at present, except for the agents with the highest numbers, only Mr. Nine, who has followed Luffy all the way, knows Weiwei's identity. So with Mr. Eight Okalem here, Luffy naturally didn't need to waste their energy to kill these bounty hunters. As for Miss Valentine's Day, who was tied up, she was still tied to the stone over there basking in the sun. Don't worry about her escaping, her fluttering fruit can only act on herself, and she can't fly when she is tied. However, Luffy is a little strange, she herself said that the light fluttering fruit can make her weight change at will from 1 to 10,000 kilograms. Even in the lightest state, it should be 1 kilogram, how did she fly? The devil fruit is really peculiar, maybe she doesn't fully understand her fruit abilities herself. A few people rested in the town for a night, during which Ikalem entertained Luffy and the others. Although there wasn't much food in the town, he left immediately, so he naturally didn't need to pay attention to it. As for the other bounty hunters, they weren't in the same group. And because of Wei Wei, Luffy and the others didn't make a move on them, which can be regarded as saving their lives, so naturally there is no need to have any burden in their hearts. The next day, Luffy and the others re-boarded the Mary ready to go to the next stop of departure, the small garden. When he left, Mr. Nine naturally wouldn't follow him anymore, and even if he wanted to, Luffy wouldn't let him stay on the Mary. Ikalem, on the other hand, was persuaded by Vivi to take the lead in returning to Alabaston. Since Luffy has been invited as a savior, it is natural that someone needs to go back and tell Crocodile's purpose to Vivi's father, the current king of Alabaston, Cobra. Moreover, if someone goes back, they can also make some arrangements in advance, so as not to cause too many losses when they get it. Originally, Ikalem had planned for Vivi to go back and report to the king about the situation. And he followed Luffy and the others, and when they were done, he would lead the way to Alabaston. But thinking that it would be dangerous to let Vivi set off alone, it was better to let her follow Luffy in them than this. Although there may be other dangers on the road, with Luffy's strength, they are completely able to protect Weiwei's safety. Moreover, the condition is that Vivi agrees, and it is completely unreasonable for him to exchange with Vivi and Luffy and they may not necessarily believe in themselves. So in the end, Vivi was asked to follow Luffy, but before leaving, Akalim gave Nami a permanent pointer to Alabaston. As for himself, it's another way, but why should we bring this guy? On the Mary, looking at Miss Valentine's Day, who was brought on board, Nami's eyes looked at Luffy with some danger. I just got myself, and I'm ready to shoot at other women? Although Ikalem and Mr. Nine didn't follow the Mary, Luffy brought this Miss Valentine's Day, who was stunned by Sanji before. Does Mr. Luffy need this woman for anything? Although Vivi felt that Luffy shouldn't have brought her up because she fell in love with the other party, she really couldn't think of anything else. Maybe this woman was used in Alabaston. As for whether or not there will be any sabotage on the ship, I'll leave it to our merciful chef. Slightly staggered Nami's gaze, although this miss. Valentine's Day is good, but Luffy will not fall in love with her at a glance. That's not a way to tie her up like this, is it? Believing Luffy's words for the time being, Nami is no longer surprised that Luffy always knows something in a prescient way. As for whether it's really as Luffy said, this woman was used in Alabaston, then we'll talk about it then. If she dares to lie to herself, Nami won't let Luffy go to her bed. Hearing Nami's words, Luffy looked towards the tied up miss, Valentine's Day. Our chef may be merciful to women, but if you do anything to jeopardize the ship, I'll just throw you into the sea, understand? Frightened by Luffy's eyes, miss, Valentine's Day nodded hurriedly. The green headed man with curly eyebrows and three knives without a bounty could easily defeat himself and Mr. Five. Valentine's Day doesn't think she'll be able to escape from this pirate with a bounty of 90 million. The other party didn't mean to kill him before, so it was better to be honest, maybe he could leave alive. Name. It's always called Miss. Valentine's Day, and Luffy finds it troublesome. Mikita. Valentine's Day didn't dare to hesitate and immediately said her name. Usopp. Untie. 
Although there is no guarantee that the other party will not make small movements, there will be no big problems with Sanji watching. No matter how bad it is, I don't let it go. If it's just to spy on someone, Luffy's domineering consumption won't be too big. Hey, is it really okay to untie her like that? Nami was still a little worried. Don't worry, as long as you're still on this boat, no one can hide from me. Luffy patted Nami on the shoulder, then looked in a certain direction and continued. Are you right? Miss Nicole Robin, somebody else got on the Mary? Before Luffy's words could be spoken, Zoro immediately put his hand on the hilt of the knife at his waist. Sanji also stood in front of Wei Wei for the first time. Usopp, on the other hand, looked around nervously, not understanding where Luffy was talking about. Mancha D. Luffy, I'm curious how you know about me. In everyone's eyes, behind the deck on the second floor of the Mary, a woman in a denim leather suit walked out from there. Are you? Miss. All Sunday? The first time she saw the woman, Wei Wei recognized who the other party was. However, obviously, Vivi only knew the identity of the other party's Baroque work club, but did not know her other identity. Is Miss. All Sunday? Also an agent of the Baroque workshop? Hearing Vivi's shout, everyone's first reaction was that the other party was also a member of the Baroque work society. Ignoring the others, the woman looked at the man who directly called out her real name with a solemn look. Nicole Robin, who originally wanted to tease each other, was directly shocked into a cold sweat. In his own information, the other party is obviously just a rookie pirate who has just entered the Great Voyage, why can he recognize himself at a glance? You must know that on the bounty order, your own portrait is still in the childhood stage. Miss. All Sunday, are you sent by Mr. Zero to dispose of us? Wei Wei, who is quite familiar with the behavior of the Baroque Work Society, immediately thought that the other party was here to kill her. I didn't receive an order to deal with you, although it was a surprise for Luffy to say his name, looking at the appearance of other people, it was obvious that he was not exposed. Slightly relieved, but Nicole Robin didn't dare to be careless, no matter what, if the other party really wanted to keep him, he might not be able to escape at all. At this moment, Nicole Robin somewhat regretted why she had come to this ship to check. If I hadn't been so curious, I probably wouldn't have fallen into the predicament I am in now. But even so, Nicole Robin didn't show any fear on her face, and still answered Vivi's question with a smile. After so many years, if you can't even manage your expression, then maybe you have died a long time ago. Hearing Nicole Robin's answer, Vivi did not let her guard down, this woman is not simple. Don't be so nervous, you know. I deliberately let you follow you to get the results of your investigation, if I want to deal with you, why wait until now? Although he was provoking Vivi, his eyes never left Luffy. Of course I know that, Vivi is not stupid, on the contrary, she can go undercover in the Baroque work club for two years, all relying on her own cleverness. Don't talk nonsense, Nicole Robin, I don't care what you're here for, but now, I have something to ask you. Luffy's face was serious and the other people on the ship didn't say anything more when they saw Luffy talking, but looked at Luffy with curiosity. They actually heard Luffy call the woman Nicole Robin this time, which means that Luffy knows who this woman is. But looking at the woman's expression, it was obviously the first time she had seen Luffy. After hearing Luffy's words, Nicole Robin was stunned at first, but then looked at Luffy vigilantly. As soon as Luffy made a move, she would not hesitate to jump onto the turtle ship that followed the Mary. What do you want to ask? With her eyes glued to Luffy, Nicole Robin didn't dare to be careless. Don't be so nervous, it's not trying to disadvantage you or ask questions that embarrass you. Not slackened by Luffy's words, Nicole Robin just watched Luffy quietly and waited for his next step. I'm short of people on my ship right now, how about it, do you want to come to my ship? Huh? What are you talking about? Mr. Luffy. As soon as Luffy finished speaking, it was Nami and the others who reacted first, especially Vivi, who reacted the most strongly to this. Nicole Robin obviously didn't expect Luffy to invite herself on board. She didn't react for a while, she just blinked and didn't make a sound. The target of my trip is Clockdoll, after the fall of the Baroque workshop, you are going to run away anyway, why don't you come to my ship? Luffy ignored everyone's surprise and puzzlement, and still looked at each other calmly. Hey, Luffy, what are you doing? You just brought a miss. You said she was useful on Valentine's Day, and now you're inviting this woman of unknown origin, you really like them, right? Luffy ignored Nami and them, it didn't mean that Nami didn't speak, and the first time she reacted, she pulled Luffy's cheek. 
Don't make a fuss, she's different from Mikita. Nicole Robin's presence is necessary if we want to sail the world. Luffy held Nami's hand that wanted to pull his cheek, and he didn't mean to let go, so he took Nami's hand and explained. Since Mr. Luffy knows me, then he should know about my past, even so, do you want to invite someone like me on board? Although Luffy's specific purpose is not known, Nicole Robin is not so nervous at this time. As long as the other party feels useful, then he will not move himself easily, this is the experience of Nicole Robin alone for so many years. And when others don't need themselves, they have already made all the arrangements, so that they can get out calmly. What, Luffy, can you say hello before you invite someone next time, it's a sudden invitation every time, not to mention whether others will agree, we will also feel very abrupt. For Luffy's eyes on people, Zoro still believes it. But I always feel that Luffy seems to know these people for a long time, and every action he takes seems to be specifically for himself and others. If you look closely, isn't this a beautiful young lady? Luffy, you finally did something commendable. A question mark slowly appeared on Luffy's head, Zoro said that, forget it, Sanji, do you think I didn't do anything before that? Road. Luffy, you won't really, you really want to invite this woman, right? For anyone and everything, Usopp has its own timid attributes. I know you've been looking for the text of history, and it just so happens that I have several pieces of news on my side, how? Luffy felt like a human trafficker now, and he was destined to rely on these sideways to invite people. I even know the text of history, and I'm more curious about Mr. Luffy now. On the surface, it still looks that calm, but when Nicole Robin heard Luffy mention the text of history, the vigilance that had just been lowered in her heart rose again. Did I genuinely invite you aboard, or do you need to think about it? Of course, you have to think about it, you are such a direct invitation, and no one dares to directly agree, right? Nicole Robin secretly complained in her heart, but she didn't mean to refuse directly. After all, Luffy was right, if he really defeated Clockdoll, then he really should run away. But what if he can't beat it, if he agrees to get on his ship now, won't he be doomed by then? You're worried that we won't be able to beat Crocodile, right? As if seeing through Nicole Robin's heart, Luffy directly expressed her concerns. Nicole Robin was taken aback, although she did think so, she didn't show the slightest expression of wanting to agree. Can you still see your hesitation in this way? Why don't you say yes to me when Clockdoll and I officially face off, and if I win, how about you agree to my invitation? As for losing, there is no need to hesitate anymore when everyone is dead, Nicole Robin thought. At the same time, he said, since Mr. Luffy has said this, then if I refuse again, I will be a little ignorant, then I will wait for Mr. Luffy's good news. After agreeing to Luffy's proposal, Nicole Robin left in her turtle one-man boat. So, can you tell us why you invited the woman from the Baroque workshop? After Nicole Robin left, Nami grabbed Luffy directly and asked. Zoro and the others also looked at Luffy at the same time, although they believed in Luffy's vision of choosing people, but they still wanted to know why Luffy did this. She is the last surviving scholar of O'Hara, and she is probably the only person on this sea who can read the text of history. Luffy has no intention of hiding everyone's curiosity, but he doesn't need to explain everything to them. O'Hara, you're talking about the destroyed O'Hara? As the princess of a country, or a big country like Alabaston, Weiwei's knowledge is naturally not comparable to ordinary people. Even Nami had seen O'Hara's message from books. Yes, O'Hara the island that was completely wiped out by the navy's demon slayer order, and she, Nicole Robin, is now the only O'Hara scholar left in this world. But does that have anything to do with you inviting her? Wait, you've been talking about the historical text since just now, so what exactly is the historical text? Nami finally grasped the point of Luffy's words. This year is already the 1520th year of the Sea Circle calendar, and 22 years have passed since the era of the Sea Pirates, but why has no one been able to find the treasure left by One Piece after so many years? This is actually not quite right, the treasure was not left by Roger, but for Nami and them at the moment, there is no need to explain it so clearly. Sure enough, after hearing Luffy's words, everyone showed thoughtful expressions. If there is no special reason, why has it been so long since the era of the pirates, but no second One Piece was born? And thinking of the historical text mentioned by Luffy, Combined with Luffy's behavior of inviting Nicole Robin, Nami seems to understand a little. You mean that to find the final island that One Piece once visited, you need someone who can read the text of history to guide you? Luffy didn't answer, because Luffy wasn't sure if he wanted to interpret the content of the historical text. 
it is still only necessary to find the four signposts in the historical text to determine the direction of the final island. But how do you know this? Obviously not everyone knows about these things, right? Nami keenly spotted the suspicion in Luffy's words. If anyone really knew this information, the great secret treasure should have been taken away a long time ago. But if no one knows, then where did Luffy know? Nami looked at Luffy with burning eyes, originally thinking that she was slowly approaching Luffy. But it wasn't until today that Nami realized that Luffy still seemed to be out of her reach. For Nami's question, Zoro and the others were also full of curiosity, even Princess Vivi who had only known each other for a short time, was looking at Luffy eagerly at this time. After all, from the moment he saw him, Luffy recognized his identity, and it was incredible to think about such a thing. Just take it as my secret, Luffy has no intention of explaining everyone's curiosity. I don't mind telling them this information, but I can't tell them that I've crossed over, right? Nami gave Luffy a deep look and didn't say anything more. Zoro also sat down directly and rested against the mainmast. Sanji and Zoro also walked towards the kitchen and warehouse, respectively. Since Luffy said so, they naturally wouldn't ask any more questions. Just like Luffy didn't ask about their past, they naturally didn't bother with what Luffy didn't want to say. Weiwei, who originally thought that she could know some of Luffy's secrets, had to let go of her curiosity after seeing Nami and their tacit understanding without asking. As for Mikita, she was still on her own ship for the time being, and she heard this information when she heard it. As for the future, Luffy didn't plan to give her too many options. Okay, let's not talk about things that far away, there is something I want to tell you in front of me. Sanji and Yusuf, who were about to leave, stopped, and everyone looked at them again. Our next destination was an ancient island, the Giant's Island, known as a small garden. Going to the small garden was what Luffy had planned before he entered the Great Voyage. In addition to the fact that it is an island in the plot, Another reason why Luffy wanted to come here is because of the two giants who live on this island. It's not that Luffy wants to invite these two giants on board, after all, it's unrealistic, even if the other party can agree, the Mary won't be able to carry them. Instead, Luffy wanted to see if he could learn the Elbaf spear, the strongest spear of the giant clan, from them. After all, aunts can learn it, so why can't they learn this trick if they have the skill of three gears and can imitate the giant? And if you learn this trick, then you will have one more killing move in the true sense. Ancient island, you say? Hearing Luffy's words, Vivi was the first to react. What's wrong, Vivi, is there something wrong? In response to Vivi's sudden and violent reaction, the few born in the East China Sea obviously did not understand the meaning of the primeval island. That's right, the primeval island, but the creatures on the island don't need to worry, but there is one thing you must be aware of. Luffy's expression was serious, don't look at the original book, only Nami was sick, but that was because it was Nami who was bitten by Kasquia. Luffy isn't sure if this virus has an effect on other people, but there is a high probability that it does. So, before you go into the small garden, you have to remind them to pay attention. Don't worry about the creatures on the island, if it's really the primeval island, there must be dinosaurs on that island, right? Although she had seen Zoro and Sanji fight, Vivi still didn't think they could beat the dinosaurs. In Weiwei's understanding, dinosaurs were huge and ferocious creatures, and although there were herbivorous dinosaurs, it didn't mean that they weren't threatening. Dinosaurs really have nothing to worry about, even if a dinosaur attacks you, I, Zoro and Sanji are sure to protect you before you are attacked. Yes, Princess Vivi, I will protect you, Sanji, who was originally serious, immediately turned up and ran in front of Vivi after hearing Luffy's words. But, Weiwei is still a little worried, and she can't be too careful before she sees a real dinosaur. The most terrifying thing about the primeval island is not the dinosaurs that can be seen, but the virus that is difficult to distinguish with the naked eye, but extremely deadly. I have a reason why I have to go to the island, and you, if you want to go to the island, you must do a good job of protection, although my next stop is the Magnetic Drum Kingdom, a medical powerhouse, but you don't want to experience the feeling that life is worse than death, right? Two days later, the Mary finally arrived at the small garden. The little garden has arrived, does anyone want to get off the boat with me? The Mary was moored on the shore, and Luffy jumped to land first. Instead of immediately looking for the two giants on the island, Luffy first questioned the others on the Mary. Then I'll go with Mr. Luffy, if I stay on the ship, I will think about the situation in Alabaston from time to time, so I should go out for a walk. Vivi, 
who changed into long sleeved trousers, also jumped off the Mary. Just as Usopp was about to jump, a bloody tiger ran out of the dense forest not far away. However, before the tiger could go far, it fell headlong to the ground. Seeing such a scene, Usopp's original foot was instantly retracted, and at the same time began to tremble continuously. I. I suddenly got a. If you can't get to the island, you won't go. Ga. And the Karui duck, who had wanted to follow, also retreated in horror at the same time. However, Vivi obviously didn't intend to let it go, ignoring the eyes of her mount begging for mercy, and said directly to Karui duck. Karui, you come with me too, quack quack. Karui duck took a few steps back with a reluctant look, but he couldn't resist his master's insistence, so he could only jump off the Mary with a dead face. Luffy couldn't understand why this duck had such a rich expression. Then I'll go shopping myself, I haven't cut down dinosaurs yet. Ignoring his own road idiot attributes, Zoro jumped off the ship directly. Hey, Zoro, bring some food back if you meet him. Sanji, who had no intention of getting off the boat, said to Sauron. Okay. I'll come back with some ingredients that no one has ever beaten. Zoro agreed, but his words aroused the desire of a cook who had not intended to get off the ship. Hey, I can't pretend I didn't hear that, huh? Let's try to see who gets the bigger food. Okay, no problem. So, the two of them left the vicinity of the Mary first and walked towards the depths of the dense forest. I'll go with me too, anyway, with you, I don't have to worry about safety. Nami also jumped off the boat, wearing long sleeved jeans as usual. In this way, only Usopp and the captured Makita were left on the ship. Hey, I'm left alone, what if that woman wrecks or escapes? Usopp apparently did not expect that there was only one enemy left on the ship with him besides himself. Hey, don't talk nonsense about you long nose. Hearing Usopp's words, Makita immediately shouted. For Luffy and the others, Makita is still quite scared. Even if he is untied now, he doesn't dare to make the slightest move, for fear that Luffy will kill him directly. And the food on the ship is really delicious, if it weren't for the fact that she was still afraid of Luffy and the others, Makita would have an urge to stay on this ship. Now that he heard Usopp doubt himself so much, he naturally had to hurry out to clarify. Luffy just glanced at Makita, and she shrunk her neck and didn't dare to look at Luffy. Don't worry, she won't do anything, even if you want to do something. You will be the first to realize that at your own speed, it doesn't take much time to rush back. On this island, Luffy plans to be domineering all the time. One is to find the location of the giants, and the other is to prevent viruses and bugs. Moreover, because of the existence of two giants, no one has explored this island for more than 100 years, right? So, with Usopp nervous and Makita relieved, Luffy took Nami and Vivi, as well as Vivi's Karui duck, and began to walk towards the dense forest. Phew. They didn't go far, and Luffy and the three of them saw dinosaurs in dresses who didn't know what breed. Is this a dinosaur? It's spectacular, I've only seen it in books before. Because of Luffy's presence, Nami not only didn't feel the slightest fear, but looked at these dinosaurs with interest. Seeing Nami like this, Vivi also let go of the nervousness in her heart. It's a rare opportunity, so let's put aside your worries for a while and relax. However, although the two girls were no longer afraid, Karui Duck, who followed behind, was still scared and followed the three of them step by step. It may be that the innate bloodline suppression makes it dare not make the slightest radical move, for fear of attracting the prying eyes of these huge creatures. It's a little hot, but it's because of the volcano in the middle? Before they could get far, Nami and Vivi were sweating on their foreheads. However, because of Luffy's previous warning, the two didn't dare to swing their clothes at will. Just as Luffy and the three of them continued to walk, a huge shadow suddenly completely covered Luffy and the others. Nami and Vivi looked up at the huge creature that appeared in front of them, their eyes horrified. Giant! Giant! Looking at the huge figure in front of them with a sword in one hand and a shield in the other, wearing simple armor, Nami and Vivi suddenly exclaimed. Then, in the horrified eyes of the two, the giant sword in his hand was raised high and slashed downward. Luffy didn't make any moves, and under the domineering perception of seeing and hearing, he could clearly perceive that the giant's sword was not slashing towards the three of them. Ah! H at the screams of Nami and Vivi, the giant's sword slashed off the head of a dinosaur. As blood gushed out, the body of the unknown dinosaur fell to the ground on its side, 
crushing a large area of trees and raising up stone ships all over the ground. It seems that Nami and Vivi's voices caught the giant's attention, and after the giant had finished off the dinosaur, he set his eyes on the three Luffy who were not far from his feet. Oh, is it human? It's been a long time since humans have come here. A voice like a bell sounded, and the giant's body squatted slightly, as if he wanted to see Luffy and the three of them more clearly. Blue Oni Tori? Looking at the huge head that came to his eyes, Luffy directly called out his name. Oh, it's amazing that after all these years, you can still hear this name from someone other than Blocky. After hearing Luffy call out his name, Don Lee was stunned for a moment, but he didn't pay much attention to it. Boom! Just as Luffy was about to say what he meant, a loud bang suddenly came from the volcano in the middle, which had been calm. Then, the sky-high flames erupted from the crater. Ah this sudden volcanic eruption frightened Nami and Vivi, who were still in the shock of seeing the giant, into screaming again. Then, two slender bodies suddenly threw themselves into Luffy's arms. Even if he was domineering, Luffy was taken aback by the surprise attack of the two. Leaving Luffy's arms, Vivi's face was hot under Nami's strange gaze, and she lowered her head for a while and didn't dare to look at the two. Nami quietly reached into Luffy's waist and twisted it hard as Vivi looked down and couldn't see. Feeling the movement of the slender hand on his waist, the corners of Luffy's mouth twitched slightly. Although it didn't hurt, Luffy always felt that it wasn't a good head. Grabbing Nami's hand that still wanted to continue, ignoring Nami's glaring eyes, Luffy pulled Nami in the direction where the giant left. Way way behind her glanced at the hands held by the two, and a strange light flashed in her eyes. Suppressing the strangeness in her heart, Vivi greeted the cowering Karui duck and quickly followed the two people in front. Because of the giant's sheer size, although he didn't seem to walk very quickly, the distance he crossed with each step was quite long. Luffy had no choice but to trot over there with the two girls because Nami and Vivi were following. Just as Luffy and the three were still trotting, there was a sense of vibration on the ground. Looking up, two huge figures were facing each other, the giant sword and the giant axe in their hands holding each other. In addition to Don Lee, who Luffy and the three of them had just met, the other giant was also wearing simple armor. However, because he was holding an axe, he did not wear a shield. The sensation of vibration just now was obviously caused by the collision of the two giant swords and axes. The great sword and the axe did not hold each other for long, and soon quickly separated under the actions of their masters. The moment Don Lee separated the great sword from the axe, the shield in his left hand suddenly swung out and swung towards the giant opposite. Dong Li's shield successfully hit the fat face of the opposite giant, but at the same time, the opposite giant also punched out, hitting Dong Li's other cheek. The two of them took a step back at the same time, the land and plants under their feet were in shambles, but the battle intent in their eyes continued to burn. The two retreating men did not pause, and after stabilizing their bodies, they swung their great swords and axes at the same time. Bell. The sound of a huge iron clash was heard again, and the entire small garden island shook violently under this confrontation again. The giant's movements were not agile, but his strength was immense, and each swing of the two brought a burst of air. Good. It's spectacular. Nami and Vivi, who had already stopped, looked up at the scene in front of them, their mouths slightly open, shocked. Moving on, Nami and Vivi could be affected by the aftermath of the battle. Besides, this side is enough to see the battle between the two giants clearly, and Luffy has no intention of moving forward. You don't want to fight these two giants, do you? As if thinking of something, Nami, who came back to her senses, looked at Luffy with a dangerous gaze, as if as long as Luffy dared to nod, she would do something terrible. And Vivi on the side also looked at Luffy after hearing Nami's words. You think too much about giants, although the giants are born with great strength because of their size, but also because of their huge size, their speed is not fast. Feeling the gaze of the two women, Luffy couldn't help it. Although his original intention was not to fight, after all, it was the stunt of the giant clan, and they would not easily hand it over to him, and it may be inevitable to fight. Nami, you should have seen my speed, if I wanted to dodge, it would be impossible to hit me with the speed of these giants. Yes, you're fast, but will you dodge? I haven't forgotten the last time you resisted Hawkeye's attack. Seeing that Luffy did have plans to fight the giants, Nami immediately became emotional. Oops, this time it's really different, last time I admitted that I was impulsive, but this time I can assure you that there will definitely be no danger. 
Luffy can't help it, although Nami is worried about herself, but she can't give up the opportunity to become stronger because of this, right? HMPH. You can do it yourself. If you get hurt, you won't want to go to my bed in the future. Maybe she was really angry with Luffy, and Nami directly said the words not to go to her own bed in front of Vivi. Alas, alas. Sure enough, before Luffy could speak, Vivi had already exclaimed. Although she knew that Luffy and Nami were very close, Vivi obviously didn't expect that the two were already in that kind of relationship. Is that the relationship between Mr. Luffy and Miss Nami? I don't know why, Wei Wei has a faint sense of loss in her heart. In fact, Nami regretted it a little when she spoke, and there was nothing wrong with saying this when the two of them said it, but when there were outsiders, it was. It's all to blame for Luffy's anger and self-inflicted embarrassment. Didn't know that Nami had scolded herself in her heart, and Luffy wasn't worried about Nami's words. Not to mention that these giants are indeed no opponents, Nami wants to prevent herself from going to her bed. When the time comes, when she is asleep, she will be able to drive herself out. Instead of thinking about those inconsequential things, Luffy continued to watch the battle between the two giants. The giants didn't use any special abilities, not even domineering. I don't know if they won't or what, but they attack each other with weapons. Soon, the battle between the two giants came to an end, and looking at their panting appearance, it was obvious that they only had the strength left for the final blow. Under the gaze of Luffy and the three, Tori's sword and shield, and the axe of another giant flew out of their hands at the same time under the parry of both sides. The two giants, who had lost their weapons, punched at the same time and hit each other at the same time. Then, as if using the last of their strength, the two giants fell backwards at the same time after each taking a punch in the face. Two huge figures fell to the ground, kicking up clouds of dust, and the huge bodies crushed all the trees they touched. 73,460 battles, and the two giants lying down spoke at the same time, and then the two giants, who were still fighting for life and death, laughed again like good friends. What's going on with them? It just seemed like they were going to fight hard, why is this like this now? Nami didn't understand, and neither did Vivi. Luffy knew the reason, but there was no need to say it. Hey, Dong Li, I met two guests today, and they gave me wine. The fat-faced giant lay on the ground and said to Dong Li, who was also lying on the ground. Great, I haven't drunk in a long time, one thing to say, such laughter is really silly. The two giants have finally ended the battle, and it's time for Luffy to come out. Nami, Vivi, let's go over, I'm here for them, if it goes well, maybe I don't need to fight them. Both, if you want wine, I've got a lot of them. Luffy took Nami and Vivi, as well as Karui the running duck, to the two giants who were still lying on the ground. It's you, I was just about to invite you to eat dinosaur meat, but I didn't expect the volcano to erupt. Dong Li, who was lying on the ground, saw Luffy and the three of them and a duck, and immediately recognized them, after all, they had just seen them. Yes, we've been dueling for 100 years with the volcanic eruption as a name, but we haven't decided the winner yet. The giant lying on the other side heard that it was someone Dong Li knew, and he also started talking heartily. By the way, my name is Dong Li, and he's Brocky, since you know me, you should know him too, right? Luffy nodded, in response. By the way, you said you had wine? For Luffy to just say that he had a lot of alcohol, the two giants were happy at the same time. That's right, the two guests Brocky met before should be my crew, and I still have a lot of wine on board. Nami and Vivi didn't ask out loud, although they felt strange. Looking at Luffy's appearance, it was obvious that he wanted to trade something with these two giants by using wine. Oh, so that woman with the long nose and the strange hat is your crew, are you pirates too? Don Lee and Brocky seemed to be resting, and they both sat up from the ground at the same time. Yes, we are indeed pirates, my name is Mancha D. Luffy, and I am here this time mainly to meet the two of you. There is no need to hide it, Luffy said directly to the two giants. We've been on this island for over 100 years, and based on your human age, we don't know anyone. Regarding Luffy's statement, the two giants are obviously very confused. However, the giants are not good at intrigues, so they did not suspect that Luffy would be against them. I'd like to see Elbaf's strongest spear, and if you two are willing to teach it to me, I'd be grateful for that. Luffy looked directly into the huge eyes of the two giants and said what he meant. As soon as Luffy's words came out, the scene fell silent in an instant. 
Donnelly and Bragi didn't expect to hear the ancient name of Elbaf's strongest spear from a human. For the two, in these more than 100 years of duel, this trick has never been used. Therefore, even they were visibly stunned when they suddenly heard Luffy say this move. Human, Elbaf's spear is a giant stunt, and it is impossible for humans to learn it. Even if we giants are in the clan, there are only a handful of people who can use this trick. Donnelly and Brocky said a word to each other, and their huge eyes also looked directly at Luffy. Moves aren't limited to race. Even Luffy, if he really learns the spear of Elbaf, he will definitely improve it. Regardless, the spear of Elbaf is better suited to the giants, there's no doubt about it. What Luffy wants to learn is nothing more than the power skills and ways of using this move. In the original Kella, you can learn the Fishman Karate of the Fishman clan, so there's no reason why you can't learn this trick, right? Any physical skill should have something in common, and the giants are nothing more than a little bigger than humans, and the threshold should be lower in this regard. What a man of courage, but we won't easily pass on the giant's skills to a human. Hearing the giant's answer, Nami's heart tightened. Such an answer is tantamount to rejecting Luffy, so what will Luffy do? Maybe you'll change your mind, Luffy smiled, not caring about Don Lee and Brocky's refusal. After all, on this island, in addition to his own people, there are other people. I will deliver the wine immediately. Oh, are you still willing to give us wine even if we refuse? What a generous man. Hearing that Luffy was still willing to offer drinks, the two giants were obviously surprised. Luffy just smiled and took Nami and Vivi back in the direction of the Mary. Just after Luffy and Nami Vivi left together, the two giants who wanted to get up found that they couldn't move. What's going on? Did the human do it? Looking down at his feet, a layer of white material completely envelops the feet supporting the body and the buttocks sitting on the ground. The two giants struck hard, trying to break free from the bundle of white matter. But found that this layer of material was extremely hard, and it was completely impossible to break free. When the two giants saw that the struggle was fruitless, they immediately thought it was Luffy's hands and feet. Ho ho ho, I finally waited for this opportunity, otherwise that man is here. I may not be able to get it. Just behind the two giants, on the back of the stone, a man and a little girl walked out. The man, with a cup of coffee in his hand and a white vest, was speaking to the two giants in a leisurely posture. And his hair is strangely tied into a figure three. Damn, who are you? Seeing the figures coming out, the two giants finally knew who had bound them. Sure enough, how could such a bold man do such a thing? Although Luffy's request was rejected, it is clear that Luffy's previous performance has been recognized by the two giants. He, no matter how bold you are, you can't get what you want, and you're just a brainless little ghost. For Luffy, although he knew that the other party had defeated Mr. Five, in Mr. Three's opinion, the other party was still just a little devil with some strength. After all, Mr. Five is just a waste in his own eyes. Didn't this come out? I thought you'd keep putting up with it? The three Luffy, who had already left, came back again from the direction they left. Luffy's domineering appearance has been turned on, and Mr. Three, who is hiding on the side, how can he hide it from Luffy? Your so-called brain, in the face of absolute strength, can't be on the table. Your Excellency Luffy, aren't you going back to get the wine? For the three Luffy who went and returned, the two giants were obviously a little surprised, and they even forgot to continue struggling for a while. If I don't leave, how can anyone jump out in a hurry? Kid, you're kidding me? Obviously hiding from the other party's sight, how did he find out? The coffee in his hand was no longer in the mood to drink, and Mr. Three threw the cup away. Just pretending to be B in front of others, he was slapped in the face with his backhand, and Mr. Three was a little angry. At this moment, the little girl standing next to Mr. Three suddenly picked up the sketchpad and wanted to draw something. Don't do anything stupid, little sister. The hinted ability is still quite weird, and Luffy has no intention of trying it himself. Since he knew the other party's ability, after seeing the little girl's movements, he looked at the other party with dangerous eyes. The little girl, who was startled by Luffy's eyes, shook her hand holding the paintbrush and almost dropped the paintbrush on the ground. Since you found out, let's just solve it with you. In Mr. Three's heart, since the reward of 100 million Bailey, the green ghost Tori and the red ghost Brocky, could not break free from the wax made by their own wax fruits. Then, Luffy, who only has a bounty of 90 million Bailey, naturally can't break it. Luffy looked at Mr. Three with interest, 
the wax fruit and the glutinous fruit of kataku chestnut were still quite similar. But the glutinous fruit was set by WT as a special superhuman system, and the wax wax fruit was just an ordinary creation system in the superhuman devil fruit, and Luffy was a little confused. Candle shackles. While Luffy was still thinking, Mr. Three took the lead. Mr. Three's hands suddenly turned into something like the white substance that bound Donnelly and Brocky. However, unlike the two giants that bound him, the white substance that his hand turned into was in the form of a flowing liquid. The white substance that bound the two giants had solidified into a solid substance. Can his hands turn into wax, or is it a creation? Luffy was speechless, maybe it's just that Mr. Three wasn't developed enough, otherwise maybe it's another category. Watch as Mr. Three's hands turn into flowing ash, and then quickly throw out a lump. The lump of ash that was thrown out quickly changed in the air, and soon formed a shackled shape. However, because no one has been tied yet, the shackles are still in a state of softening. Watching this shackle go straight to himself to prevent Luffy from choosing to dodge. The shackles formed by the white ash hit Luffy's feet without hindrance, and then quickly solidified into a solid state the moment it locked Luffy's feet. HMPH, the unashamed little ghost, even if the reward of 90 million Bailey is not the same as being caught by me. Seeing Luffy hit by his own candle shackles, Mr. Three finally let out a bad breath. I don't feel so angry about what Luffy put on the table before. Your Excellency Luffy. X2, Mr. Luffy. The two giants and Vivi saw Luffy being directly trapped by each other, and immediately shouted anxiously. Nami didn't say anything, after all. She had seen the duel between Luffy and Hawkeye. I heard the uncle with the strange hairstyle just now say that his move is candle shackles, and I think it should be the devil fruit ability of candles. Since it's a candle, it means that it will be melted by fire, and Luffy's ability to show before has moves like fire fist. Besides, with Luffy's speed, it should be easy to dodge that Mr. Three's attack, and since Luffy didn't dodge, he must have some idea. Therefore, Nami can be said to be not worried at all about Luffy being trapped by the other party. The hardness of your wax wax fruit is not bad, how about it, do you want to consider coming to my ship? I felt the strength of the candle shackles on my feet, and with Luffy's strength, I really couldn't break free without using domineering. And it doesn't have the soft texture of ordinary candles, so it's no wonder that Sauron, who didn't reach the realm of cutting iron in the original book, couldn't cut this candle. Stinky boy. What stupid thing are you talking about? You are now caught by me, and I want to ask Rao to change his words. Catch, are you guys in the Baroque workshop so naive? Luffy's words made Mr. Three, who was still secretly happy on the side, stunned directly. Do you think the Navy's bounty is set at random? Don't look at the two giants who have a bounty of 100 million Bailey, Donnelly and Brocky. Can't break Mr. Three's candle now, but that's when their physical strength is exhausted. Do you really think that the fight between two giants is a playhouse? Stinky boy, don't be hard mouthed, look at my candle shackles. Mr. Three, who was angered by Luffy's tone, shook his hands that had turned into flowing candles again. This time the candle shackles flew towards Luffy's hands. Now that you've seen Mr. Three's candles, there's no need for him to keep his hands locked. Looking at the candle shackles that were getting closer and closer, Luffy's right hand was covered with an armed color domineering. With the slight tremor of the arm, a layer of flame quickly wrapped around the right hand covered with domineering. The shackles of the candles flying in the air have not yet been completely solidified, and it is estimated that the effect will not be very good if you attack directly, so Luffy decisively chose to use fire to melt the candles. And when flames erupted from Luffy's hands, Mr. Three, who was originally full of confidence, suddenly changed his face. Obviously, I didn't expect Luffy to still have the ability to use flames. The candle shackles quickly melted and fell to the ground as soon as they came into contact with Luffy's right fist wrapped in flames. Luffy strained his feet, and the armed color domineering shifted from his right hand to his feet. Click. The candle, which was extremely hard after solidifying, shattered in Mr. Three's shocked eyes. Mr. Three, what should we do? We can't beat him, the little girl who hasn't moved because of Luffy's words on the side. That is, Mr. Three's partner, Miss. Golden Week. Ideographic period. After seeing Luffy easily break free from Mr. Three's candle shackles, he said to Mr. Three timidly, and at the same time, his body slowly moved behind Mr. Three. Stupid, it's not that you were scared by others at the beginning, now use your ability to try, I'll contain him. 
Looking at Miss Golden Week, who was hiding behind him, Mr. Three could only prepare to go directly to himself. Candle Champion's Cup. Mr. Three let out a loud shout, and countless white wax suddenly erupted from his waxy hands, and then quickly wrapped him. Luffy didn't stop him, just waiting for him to complete his transformation. Miss. Golden Week, help me get a color, Mr. Three, who was wrapped in candles all but his head, shouted at Miss. Golden Week. I saw Miss Jinjo, who was called, shaking the brush in his hand continuously. Mr. Three's original pure white candle armor was also painted with red paint on various parts. Phew. Stinky boy, although you can break free from my candle shackles, I am invincible under this candle champion cup. I feel that after wearing this armor condensed by candles, Mr. Three's whole person is different. Originally, I thought that I would be restrained by myself and let Miss Golden Week use the paint ability to solve Luffy, but now I feel that I can completely defeat Luffy. Maybe this is the romance of men, but Luffy doesn't think his armor is anything good looking, and he feels that this robot like thing in the pirate world is a bit sloppy. Looking at Mr. Three, who has become confident again, Luffy wonders if there is something wrong with the IQ of these people. Now that he has seen that he has the ability to release flames, and he can also directly break his candle. So, what's the point of equipping another candle armor now? The point is that you still look so confident after you equip it. Luffy is really a little speechless. Champion. Plow the field. Mr. Three, who was full of confidence, shook the part of his armor that resembled a boxing glove, and the whole person rushed towards Luffy. The ability is almost understood, so there is no need to continue to fight with him. Saying all this, I just want to know what is going on with the wax fruit. However, it is not obvious how Mr. Three uses it now, and it seems that he can only turn his arm into a candle and then make things from the arm that turned into a candle. As for the rest, maybe it's because it's not developed enough, or maybe the wax fruit can only go this way. After all, the abilities of the devil fruit are really puzzling. His right hand was once again covered with armed color domineering, and looking at the candle fist that kept swinging towards him, Luffy was not polite and punched it out directly. Click. Luffy's right fist hits Mr. Three's constantly swinging candle gloves. Then, under Mr. Three's horrified gaze, the candle fist gloves on the candle armor he made that were in contact with Luffy's right fist shattered. And that's not all, as the gloves break, the cracks spread. The sound of, click, also kept coming, and finally, the armor formed by the condensed candle was completely shattered. The shards all fell to the ground with a, click, sound. On the side, I also wanted to wait for the opportunity to use the paint to Luffy to suggest the ability of Miss. Golden Week. When Mr. Three fell to the ground, his eyes stopped moving. Luffy didn't kill Mr. Three, or Luffy didn't do damage to Mr. Three at all. The punch was only aimed at the candle armor. A single punch will blow the candle that can trap us to pieces. The giant Dongli, who was still trapped in place by Mr. Three, looked at Luffy with some surprise. Although it is true that he and Brocky in their heyday can break through the candle of this hardness, it will not be easy. That's domineering, isn't it? As the captains of the former giant pirates, the two of them naturally know about domineering. When Luffy used the fire fist just now, he didn't see it because of the flames, and his feet just thought that Luffy was powerful. But now looking at Luffy's punch that hit Mr. Three, it was clearly covered with a layer of armed domineering power. Don Lee and Brocky looked at each other and fell silent. Well, do you want to be my crew? You and this girl are still very good. Looking at Mr. Three who fell to the ground and Miss Golden Week, who was standing dumbfounded, Luffy once again made a proposal to let them on board. Mr. Three's wax wax fruit has similar characteristics to waxy fruit, and further development may be able to do what waxy fruit can do. And Miss. Golden Week, her ability is not actually the power of the devil fruit. Can this kind of suggestive ability go a step further and let people grasp the power of domineering through hints? After all, Domineering is a natural human power, and it is not impossible to channel this power through suggestion. If she can do it, then this girl's abilities will be very valuable. Hey, Luffy, why did you casually invite the enemy on board? Hearing Luffy's words, the first to react was not Mr. Three and Miss Golden Week, who were invited. It's Nami, who has been staying with Vivi all the time, and Nami really can't understand that Luffy has once again invited people from hostile forces on the ship. Could it be that Lu Fei can really see through the hearts of others, 
Otherwise, how can we ensure that these people who are invited to come up will not betray or make small moves? Don't be stupid, even if we agree, Mr. Zero won't let us go. Regarding Luffy's invitation again, Mr. Three still has no intention of agreeing. Although the opponent can easily defeat him, Mr. Three still doesn't think that Luffy can compete with the Baroque Work Society. In terms of numbers alone, the Straw Hat Pirates have been completely destroyed by the Baroque Working Society. Not to mention that the Baroque Workshop also has the big boss of Mr. Zero. Although Luffy's bounty is as much as 90 million, even if there are more than 100 million pirates, the Baroque Working Society has solved a lot. Looks like you're in awe of your mysterious president. Is Clockdoll strong? That's undoubted, at least for anyone who can't be domineering, natural devil fruit equals invincible. Even if you know how to restrain the Russell fruit, do you expect a man who can't even be domineering to defeat Clockdoll by relying on water? Is it true that the pirates of Clockdoll have done it for nothing for so many years? Moreover, the Russell fruit is not a smoke fruit, and the attack power of the two is not of the same level. Does this affect Luffy though? Clockdoll may be an invincible existence for ordinary people, but for Luffy, it is not much more difficult than Smoker. But it doesn't matter if you don't agree, I will definitely take this girl away, her ability is very valuable. Hey, Luffy. Luffy's made Nami furious again, although Luffy said that he wanted to let the girl on the boat because of the other party's ability, but Nami just felt very unhappy. What's more, how old is this girl? Even if the other party was an agent of the Baroque workshop, Nami didn't want such a small person on the ship to become a pirate together. At the same time that Nami screamed, Vivi also looked at Luffy with strange eyes. Hearing Nami's displeasure and Vivi's strange look, Luffy felt that he shouldn't have brought them over. Huh. Miss. Golden Week, who was named by Luffy, took two steps back as if frightened. Regarding Luffy's behavior of directly wanting to take himself to the pirate ship, Miss. Golden Week doesn't know if he should resist. After all, he has thin arms and legs, and if Luffy really forcibly brought himself onto the ship, it would be completely impossible for him to escape in Luffy's hands. Hey, don't go too far, Miss Golden Week is only 16 years old. Seeing that Luffy didn't seem to be going to let go of his partner, Mr. Three immediately yelled at Luffy. You also know that she is only 16 years old, so how did she become your partner? Luffy refuted Mr. Three's question without hesitation. I'm really bothering you, Lord Luffy. Don Lee and Brocky, who were freed by Luffy from Mr. Three's candle bondage, thanked Luffy. As for Mr. Three and Miss Golden Week, they were sitting on a stone next to them. Even if Luffy didn't do anything to them, the two didn't dare to act rashly for the time being. Judging from the power of Luffy's punch that smashed his own candle championship cup just now, if that punch hits him directly, Mr. Three estimates that he will be gone directly. Now that the matter is settled, then you can come with me, the wine is still on my ship. It's just a few barrels of wine, and if you give it to them, you give it to you. And even if they don't teach themselves the Elbaf gun, it's not a big deal. As for you two, come with us. Luffy glanced at Mr. Three and Miss Golden Week, who were honestly waiting, before turning around and preparing to head to the Mary. Your Excellency Luffy, please wait a minute. Just as Luffy turned around, Don Lee and Brocky glanced at each other and stopped Luffy at the same time. Nami and Vivi, who were about to follow Luffy back, paused and looked at the two giants. Luffy turned his head and looked at them calmly, and he could roughly guess what they wanted to say. Your Excellency Luffy saved both of our lives, we are both grateful, we can teach you the spear of Elbath of the giant clan, but whether you can learn it can only depend on your Excellency Luffy. Sure enough, the giants were. The two giants who guarded Justice Island in the original book were able to immediately turn against Luffy and help Luffy after Usopp informed them of the news of the blue and red ghosts. When he arrived at the green ghost and red ghost, he was equivalent to saving the lives of two people, and it was reasonable to be able to agree to his request. It doesn't matter, it's enough for me to teach two Ken, as for whether I can learn it, that's my own business. Since Charlotte Lingling can learn, there's no reason why she can't learn it, Luffy still has some understanding of his talent. In that case, let's tell you about the principle of Elbaf's spear first. If you drink wine, it's not too late for us to finish talking, otherwise the wine will be unnatural to drink. Donnelly and Brocky said a word to each other, and when they saw Luffy agree, the body that was supposed to get up sat down again. Luffy also found a stone next to him and sat down, ready to listen to the explanation of the two. Seeing that the two giants agreed to Luffy's previous request, 
Nami breathed a sigh of relief. Although according to the situation just now, Luffy should not have a problem against these two giants, but it is better not to fight. Relieved, Nami sat down next to Luffy, and Vivi followed Nami and sat next to her. And the duck, seeing that all three of them sat down, also wanted to lean on Luffy and sit next to Luffy, but was directly kicked by Luffy next to Mr. Three. Quack! Karui Duck got up from the ground and yelled at Luffy twice. Then he glanced at Mr. Three, who was sitting there obediently, pouted his buttocks, and directly pushed Mr. Three to the side for some distance. Fortunately, Miss Golden Joe sat farther away, otherwise with her petite size, it is estimated that she would be pushed down directly. Mr. Luffy, don't bully Karui. Vivi, who was next to Nami, saw this scene and complained to Luffy. And Mr. Three, who was squeezed away on the side, glared at the duck sitting next to him, but he didn't dare to attack, so he could only endure it silently. Seeing Luffy sit down, Don Lee and Brocky didn't care that anyone else was present, and directly told the principal of Elbaf's spear. It's not that they believe in the human who trapped them just now, but in their opinion, the Elbaf spear of the giants is not something that anyone can learn. Even among the giants, not everyone can do it, let alone humans. If you can learn the strongest spear of the giants across racial boundaries by listening, then the spear of Elbaf will not be a unique skill of the giants. What's more, Mr. Three doesn't look like a talented human at all. So Don Lee and Brocky didn't deliberately hide their thoughts either. Even Luffy, they don't think they can learn, it doesn't take much time to explain the principle, and Luffy understands the key after listening to it once. The next thing that's missing is to actually feel it. But Luffy is not stupid so naturally he won't let them do it to him right now. Not to mention that Nami is still here, how could she accept Luffy's such vexatious behavior? Besides, even if there was no Nami, Luffy wouldn't have taken this trick and tried it himself. The so-called feelings, although it is easiest to feel this one, Luffy does not need to do it to this extent. Luffy just wanted to see how effective this trick actually was. And the island-eating beasts near this island have always existed, and I believe that the giants will not just leave it alone when Luffy leaves, and let Luffy and others solve it themselves. Since we're done, let's go, let's have a banquet here. Luffy stood up again, pulled Nami up, and then looked at the two giants and said. There is one thing to say, it is really difficult to sit next to the giant, and you have to raise your head to say anything. Since it's a banquet, let's go hunt a few dinosaurs first, how can there be wine at the banquet without meat? Brocky, Brocky is right. Lord Luffy, you go first, we'll follow soon, Brocky has just seen where your ship is parked. The two giants were also pirates before, and they were quite happy about Luffy's banquet. After all, the two have been fighting on the island, and the last banquet is no longer known how long ago it was. In that case, let's go first. Luffy didn't refuse, they were the hosts of this small garden, and since they had seen where the Mary was parked, they naturally wouldn't get lost. Well, when it comes to getting lost, I don't know where Zoro is now, so I hope Sanji can meet him. Ah! Sneeze! On the other side of the small garden, it is located at opposite poles with the Mary. Zoro is dragging a huge dinosaur around. Suddenly, I felt an itchy sensation in my nose, and I couldn't help but sneeze. In the candle room where Mr. Three was supposed to be on standby, Sanji was talking to a man with a gloomy voice. At Sanji's feet, a bird and an amice were rolling around and fainting with their heads covered in circles. Several drawing boards were broken in the corners of the wall, and from the slightly intact part, it was clear that there were portraits of Luffy in them. Ah, as soon as he reached the Mary, Usopp jumped off the Mary crying. Apparently after Luffy and the others left, something terrible happened to Usopp. But it can't be said to be a terrible thing, after all, it's just a giant clan. Sure enough, Usopp, who jumped down, immediately told the story of meeting Brocky in his exaggerated tone. But when he saw that there was wine on the Mary, he begged for a few barrels and left us alone, and then after the eruption of the volcano in the middle, he headed there. You're too cowardly, aren't you? Nami mocked Usopp's tricks mercilessly. Yes. If you have the ability, don't follow Luffy. Don't think you can't see Nami's ridicule, if you weren't always by Luffy's side, you'd be just a coward. That's what Usopp thought, and then that's what he said. Needless to say, the consequences of this will happen. Bang. The world is quiet, ha ha ha, you're so funny with a long nose. Brocky, who was dragging a dinosaur back, 
laughed when he saw Usopp who had been knocked to the ground by Nami. Huh, hey, 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 you, why are you back? Usopp, who was pretending to be dead on the ground, immediately got up from the ground when he heard Brocky's voice. After seeing the 20 meter tall figure, he immediately ran behind Luffy. Dong Li and I are here to attend Luffy's banquet. Long nose, you can actually be invited by Luffy to the ship, there must be something extraordinary. Being invited on board by someone like Luffy, in Brocky's opinion, the other party obviously has something extraordinary. Aha, uh -huh, of course, I didn't expect you to be quite discerning. Usopp, who was still hiding behind Luffy and was scared to death, changed his fear just now when he heard such a tall giant praise him. Immediately jumped out from behind Luffy, and then responded with a smug face. Ha ha ha, you're really interesting, it can be said that a big talk king like Usopp is a dimensionality reduction blow for a creature with a simple brain. Looking at Usopp, who was already sitting on Brocky's shoulder and talking happily with Brocky, Nami and Vivi were dumbfounded. Hey, Mr. Three, Miss. Golden Week, why are you here? After Luffy and the others returned, Mikita, who had been staying on the lookout, also fell lightly. However, after seeing Mr. Three and Miss Golden Week behind Luffy, he immediately looked at the two of them as if they were facing a great enemy. Don't worry, these two people are just like you now, don't be so nervous. For Mikita's vigilance, Luffy can naturally understand. Mikita's current situation is equivalent to betraying the Baroque workshop, and after being learned by Mr. Zero, it is not strange to send someone to solve herself. After all, I've done something similar before, however, after hearing Luffy's words, Mikita was slightly relieved, but then she was surprised again. I didn't expect even Mr. Three to be caught by Luffy, and looking at Mr. Three and Miss. Golden Week, even if they can move freely, they don't dare to do other small actions. Mikita felt that she was caught, and there seemed nothing unacceptable. Miss. Valentine's Day, you were on their ship, and you betrayed the Baroque workshop? The sudden appearance of Mikita also startled Mr. Three. I didn't pay attention to what Luffy said just now, and I just thought that the other party had betrayed the Baroque work club like Vivi. Yes, I joined the Straw Hat Pirates, how about you, are you going to join us too? Hey, you woman, when did you become our partner? Hearing Mikita's words, Luffy didn't refute, but Nami couldn't help it. Mikita ignored Nami's reaction, just glanced at Luffy secretly, and was slightly relieved to see that Luffy didn't mean to refute. Then continued to look at Mr. Three, waiting for his answer. Since she is destined to be hunted down by the Baroque workshop, Mikita naturally has to think about her future. However, it seems that the only way to go in his future is death except to stay in this boat. The things that Luffy talked about about the great secret treasure before did not avoid him, which also means that he knows the other party's secret. Mikita isn't stupid, even if Straw Hat Luffy doesn't look like an innocent person. But the bounty of 90 million Bailey is there, and I don't dare to bet on whether you will kill him. The sentence just said can be regarded as a statement. Since the other party did not refute what he said, it means that he can indeed stay in this boat. Mikita, who breathed a sigh of relief, didn't seem to be as scared of Luffy as before. HMPH, the boss won't let you go. Mr. Three did not reply to Mikita's words, but only said something stiff before saying no more. Are you talking about a man named Mr. Zero? I just got a call from him in a cabin? Sanji, who didn't know when he returned, threw an even bigger dinosaur that Brocky and Donnelly had brought back next to the Mary. After hearing the words of this man I had never seen, such a sentence suddenly popped up. Miss Nami, Miss Vivi, I am back. Is this a giant? It's really that tall? Then, without waiting for Mr. Three to react, Sanji immediately shouted at Nami and Vivi beside Luffy. At the same time, Tori and Brocky, who were sitting behind Nami and Vivi, finally caught Sanji's eyes. It can be said that it is only now that such a big giant has been discovered, and Sanji is quite outrageous. What are you talking about? How can you mess with other people's phone bugs? Mr. Three, who suddenly heard the bad news, almost squirted a mouthful of old blood on the ground, and if the boss knew that he had failed the task and leaked the phone bug information, he estimated that he would finish. Luffy suddenly became interested, and Sanji's wave can be said to be an excellent assist. Maybe you don't have to wait until Clockdoll is settled, and these two people will join in and officially join themselves. In this case, the domineering spirit of those people on the ship may have the hope of awakening in advance. What's not to like? Your enemies anyway, 
so it's best for us to let your own people kill each other, right? Sanji completely ignored Mr. Three's anger and said with an understatement on his face. By the way, Sanji, since you're back, Zoro should be back too, right? Hearing Luffy's inquiry, Sanji suddenly fell silent, then Luffy was also silent.